They're talented, they're well coached, and they really rebound the basketball. So they'll pre present a lot of challenges. Uh, congratulations to Jaden Ledee, All-American, third team. So happy for Jaden. I'm just wondering why he wasn't on the first team. That's how good I think he is. Agree with you, Coach. And it is time. It is that time. March Madness is upon us. Welcome into Gwen and Chris, everybody. 201 is the time. Chris, hello. Matt Scraby together today in our Odyssey Palace Studios. Tony Gwynn Jr., halfway around the world. He's getting ready for the Padres season opener tomorrow morning, 3 a.m. Scraby, we're just 13 hours away. From the first pitch of the Major League Baseball season, you Darvish will throw it to the Los Angeles Dodgers. Tyler Glass now will be on the hill for L.A. tomorrow night or tomorrow morning or however you wish to uh, describe it. The Dodgers will come into the game with three of the top four odds-on favorites to win MVP this year in the National League. If it's not did the Yankees, it's the Dodgers. Did you are, see that? Yes, I did. The uh, odds-on favorite to win MVP in the National League is still Ronald Acuna, who won it last year. The second choice is Mookie Betts. Shohei Otani's not even the best odds on his own team. And then Freddie Freeman is next. I mean, it's it's a it's a I mean, look out. Darvish, keep the ball down in the first inning. He's gonna place all three of those guys to start the game. I know. I mean, that's the way the Dodgers will play it. Betts, Freeman, Otani. Probably the first three he faces tomorrow, 3.05 a.m. Hope you'll join us. We should have a good crowd of late night, early morning fans at the uh, Seven Mile Casino down in Chula Vista. Brought to you by our friends at Soapy Joe's. That's right. Tony Gwynn Jr. is the chief bubble officer. Yes, he is. Of Soapy Joe's. Still I don't know what that is, and I don't know. Don't really know what, what it is, is but either. if you go to if you go to Soapy Joe's as much as I do, you see Tony Gwynn. Junior's face everywhere. Yes. He welcomes you to Soapy Joe's. He takes you through the actual car wash. He does. I think he, he rides washes. in the car with you. Yes, he'll even wash your car. His if cutout you, if will you, also vacuum your car. If you pay enough money, you can you can actually, yeah. If Tony will jump in your car. You can actually get lunch <laughs> at his house after you're done. I haven't even had lunch at his house. The Aztecs are getting ready. What did you expect Brian Dutcher to say there, by the way? Me? No, anybody. Wow. Well, we've got UAB coming up on Friday. We're going to look past them. Yeah. I'm really I'm really nervous about the Auburn game, potentially, on Sunday. UAB, not too concerned. Said what every coach says. I mean, Brian Dutcher would never even think no that. No other so. coach. No coach anywhere would say it. Maybe Nor Rick should Pitino. they. Maybe Rick Pitino. Yeah, right. Nor should they. You have to. You have to compliment your opponent. You have to say how great they are. The bottom line is UAB is not that great. They've won a few games to get into the tournament. I mean, obviously you got to win some games, but their net metric ranks them below every team that's seeded thirteen, and they're seeded twelve. They're the lowest twelve, obviously. But uh, they're even lower than the 13. This the does Aztecs, make me nervous. That does make me. Is a little it making nervous. you a little nervous? It does because we we know here in San Diego that time from time to time the matchups work out in our favor and the team plays up to that level or down to that level in this right. case. Well, here's here's the scouting report on Alabama Birmingham. They have trouble stopping the opposition. They are near the bottom oh, bad. <laughs> of their conference in scoring defense and field goal percentage defense. They also don't shoot the three very well. So other than that, you know, they got a pretty dangerous team. Now, the reason you're worried is because the Aztecs have been – a little hit and miss yeah, yeah, this year. Yeah, they have. You know, there's there are some games when the Aztecs are, you know, knocking some shots in. If they're knocking some shots in, the Aztecs can go all the way to the second weekend. They can beat anyone if they're making some shots. Problem is, they're not usually making shots. And so the question to me, as far as this game on Friday, is going to be this. UAB is not going to be guarding you very well. So are you going to make the open shots? And if you do, you'll win. If you don't, you're gonna have a you're gonna have a battle on your hands. Mm. But anyway, the tournament gets underway tonight. Scraby, this is what's this, Scrabe? It's your bracket. It's also your bracket. I oh. have your bracket now too. Did you look at my final four yet? Uh, ooh. 
Ooh. <laughs> oh boy. I did it a little bit. I just got around different. to the bottom quadrant of your <laughs> final four. Well, One of uh, the quadrants is a, is a, is a wild mess. You know, you, you know what? Last year, just for everybody who's filling out a bracket, last year, keep this in mind, the final four teams were UConn, which was a four seed, San Diego State, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, which was mm-hmm. a five seed, Florida Atlantic, Miami of Florida mm. was a five seed, and Florida Atlantic was a nine seed. So no one even close to the ones he got there. No ones got there. No twos got there. No and no threes. threes got there. And only one number four got there. So the top 16 teams in the tournament last year, 15 of them were knocked out. I don't know that that can happen again. I, I, I just either. think that was a little crazy. So I'm being a little a little more normal on my picks this year. But as I've said in the past, I'm not very good at picking a bracket. If you want to know who to who not to pick, check my bracket out when you uh, – do you ever feel when you join our Yahoo oh, good call. bracket challenge? Yes, go to my Twitter at Matt Scraby. It's pinned at the top. Just click that link and you can sign up. Uh, do you ever feel like this? Because I was doing the bracket earlier today and I yeah. would, and I kept coming to the end and I was like, I don't really like this. I always do that when I get to like the final four and I'm thinking, man, I really picked some bad teams. That's not who I really want. That's not who I want. But do at you want to go back time, through and do it again? No, no. At the same time, it's it's my instinct. A lot of times, you know, I fill one out and then I go through it and then I go, okay, let's be realistic here. And I take Colgate out of the final four. You know what I mean? (laughs) Yes. Until Colgate makes the final four. Yeah. One day they will. And I won't have them. All right. We'll talk plenty of uh, NCAA March Madness. The tournament actually gets underway in about an hour and a half. Ooh, what channel? The True True TV. TV? Yeah. As Ben Higgins tweets out every year at this time, (laughs) Ben always tweets this out. And Ben, I haven't seen this yearly tweet, so I'm counting on you. But Ben Higgins goes, today is the day where all of us have to figure out where the hell True TV is on our cable system again. I'm looking through right now. I have no idea. Because nobody watches True TV for an entire year until the day of the NCAA tournament when a bunch of games are on true tv it's not true i mean i do watch. do you true TV seriously every once in a while do you watch impractical jokers no i i because that's about the only show that they have on there they have all those like other police shows oh they too. do like, so you watch it once in a while once in a while yeah not but nobody knows awesome. where true tv no, everybody knows can't find it. everybody knows where channel eight is everybody knows where tnt is everybody knows where tbs is but true tv you got to go searching and uh normally ben will tweet that out oh ben, there it I'm, is 246 oh, 246 on right now <laughs> Two uh impractical jokers yes. i told you that's what's always on there <laughs> yeah 246 on direct tv i believe it was 39 on um my spectrum that's not nbc cable. no 39 on the cable you know not on the actual Wasn't it, isn't it still 739 uh it's seven it's channel seven oh okay. on on spectrum i'm wrong for nbc i'm wrong 39 is true TV on Spectrum. As far as uh, some of the other cable providers and dish networks and things of that nature, you're on your own because I don't know where true TV is. But, Ben, if you're out there, please send your yearly text. I get a good chuckle out of it (laughs) every single year, a good chortle (laughs) about when he says you got to find true TV. But, yes, the tournament gets underway on true TV at 3.30 this afternoon. The first game of the tournament will be between – Howard and Wagner powerhouses. There you go. Second game tonight will be a very good game, I think. Colorado State, Virginia. A lot of people said Virginia doesn't belong in the tournament. You know, look, if you're an Aztec fan, you spend all year rooting against Colorado State, you shouldn't be rooting against them tonight. No. Because the more that the teams in the Mountain West win, the better chances are in the future that the Mountain West will get more teams You're in the tournament. You're a Mountain West fan until you have to play against the yeah, Mountain West Yeah, if you have team. to face them, yeah. But, no, you want to root for all these Mountain West teams. It just looks better for San Diego State's future. Real Plus, quick, it's Chris. more money. Yes. It's more money. I think you get about – on average, you get about $2 bucks every time you win a game. Wow. And that money is spread around the conference. That is a huge amount It's of like I said the other day. When the Aztecs lost to New Mexico, they made money. Because that was two million bucks that the Mountain West Conference would not have had had New Mexico not gotten into the field, which 
they wouldn't have yeah had they not got the automatic bid so uh real quick on uh, if you want to watch us on x you can 97 through the fan sd also youtube just search 97 through the fan uh here is an x submission and all you x people out there i can't reply to you but i will try to read this but raymond says there's Purdue again at number one, two years in a row, losing to the number 16, question mark? Yeah. I, I don't think so. Here's the thing with Purdue. You're scared to death if you're picking them in your bracket because the last – listen to this, Grave. This is unbelievable how bad Purdue is in the tournament. Last year they lost to a 16 seed. Two years ago they were knocked out by a 13 seed, and the year previous to that, St. Mary, St. Peter's beat them. Yeah, St. Peter's. So they lost to a 15 seed. The Peacocks. Purdue has lost to a 16, a 13, and a 15. And there they are again at the top. You know, they yeah, are scary to pick. I will say that. They are scary to pick, but you got to think that's got to change at some point, right? They have the best basketball player in the country year after year. Year after year. And as we said yesterday, when Virginia lost as a one seed to a 16, the next year they won it all. So maybe Purdue can rely on some of that good fortune. Anyway, the tournament gets started tonight. We'll talk about it as we go along. We have joining us on the program, I got to find his name, Scrape. Evan Dudley. Evan Dudley from Alabama.com. That's AL.com. He covers UAB. So we will get a, a little uh, preview of the UAB Blazers. That's coming up in about a half an hour. It's our also, yearly check-in. Yeah, we got to check in with our opponent. Yes, we did Carl's of Charleston. We Should did I tell him Syracuse. that Brian Dutcher at his press conference today said they're overlooking UAB and they're no. on to the Auburn game? No. <laughs> don't put those words in <laughs> Provide Brian a little mouth. bulletin board material. I don't I don't. That think would not be good. Any. Look, I'm an Aztec, man. I, wanna, I don't want to say anything that's going to – Get you and me fired up. You are, are you kidding very me? superstitious human being. I am really superstitious. Uh, but I'm also very excited at 3.40 today, Elijah Saunders of the Aztecs, their uh, young forward, uh, will be on the program as well today. So we're looking forward to all of that. Last night, Scraby, during the Scraby Chronicles, mm. was in the middle of chronicling what in the world has happened to Kate Middleton. These are the kind of important, earth-shattering Stuff that Scraby tries to deal with on his show every night between six and seven. If yep. you haven't started listening, you better make a note of it. Mm -hmm. But he was in the middle of trying to debunk the Kate Middleton thing when Blake Snell had the audacity, audacity. to interrupt you by signing with the San Francisco Giants. Not only that, but I had to put off my psychic vampire talk until the end of the show, and you think You're that's what? a the psychic vampire? Oh, brother. I was being, because I teased it earlier. Have you never heard of a psychic vampire before? I, are vampires real? It's not an actual vampire, but a psychic vampire is a term for someone who sucks all the life out of you. I see. And uh, so I was just presenting that, but Blake Snell had to get in the way and sign a deal with the Giants. All right. We'll talk about what that all means. The latest on the Padres. Just a little less than 13 hours Wait. away from the first pitch of the first game. Sorry. I'm so crazy. Sometimes. I love when you just interrupt I, I, me. I don't. I don't. Flat. I don't. You don't love it? No, because I do it, and I'm like, that was the wrong time to do that, Matt Scraby. Uh, Kate Middleton was not shopping. Everybody on the chat telling me that she was found. She, she that that's a fake video. Do you notice how TMZ is the place where they're putting out the video, and then in the next blog article they're saying, "Is the video real?" Just let me know when I can continue the Go show. Ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I was about to go to a break, which is something that you normally like. Yes. Not when Kate Middleton's in, in the uh, mix. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Zip it. Quinn and Chris coming back to talk Padres in the second segment on our Gwen and Chris get together 97.3 The Fan.
All right, I'm going to try to get in here before Scraby interrupts me. Ha! Ha, 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 ha. Welcome into uh, Gwen and Chris. 221 is the time. Chris Ella, Matt Scraby, together, Odyssey Palace Studios. Uh, a couple of things to take care of. Uh, one, uh, get your brackets in. Uh, go to Scraby's uh, Twitter X account, as it were. Mm -hmm. uh, search for uh, Scraby right at the top. You'll find a link. And at Matt Scraby. At Matt Scraby. You want everybody to uh, fill out a bracket. It's bragging rights. But you'll be able to keep track of how I'm doing, how Scraby's doing. Try to get Tony's bracket in there. Yeah, I sent the link last night. And everybody uh, fill out your brackets, and let's see who does the best. Uh, so take care of that. Number two, well, we've already said it once, but I'll say it again. Scraby and I are both going to be there at 3 a.m. at uh, Seven Mile Casino tomorrow morning. That is um, off the 5 Freeway down in Chula Vista. And uh, it's right off the freeway. Okay. Like you get off the freeway, turn right, and bam. It, bam. It's right there. Uh, so we're going to have a viewing party down there brought to you by uh, Soapy Joe's. Ben and Woods are hosting. Scraby and I are just uh, window dressing. Yes. Tomorrow. But uh, we will be there. So we invite you to come down and watch the Padre Dodger game with us. All right. Uh, that said, I got to say one more thing. Everybody knows Tony, Tony Kornheiser. <laughs> Not everybody. I don't know. Never met him. Uh, but to get him unfiltered, check out the Tony Kornheiser show podcast. The iconic voice of PTI is a roller coaster of wit and wisdom. I would love somebody to write that about me someday. Chris is yourself. a roller coaster of wit and wisdom. Yeah. You can write it about yourself and then say it like someone wrote it for you. Yeah, right. I can think of two other words that would probably describe me a lot better than wit and wisdom. But Okay. Uh, Tony Kornheiser, smart, funny, unique perspective on the sports world. Unleash your curiosity. Join the conversation. Follow the Tony, Tony Kornheiser. Why? It's not that easy to say his name. Uh, the Tony Kornheiser Show, free Odyssey app, wherever you get your podcasts. Trivia. Scraby. Why... Does Scott Boris every single year ask for bazillions of dollars for his clients and hold his players out awaiting payment on those demands? Why does he do this every year, would you say? Well, because he has a good track record of paying off. Because it works! Somewhat. What do you mean somewhat? Jordan Montgomery is still trying to find a team. Oh, you don't worry about Blake him. Blake Snell has only Blake a two-year deal. Blake Snell got a two-year contract for $62 million. That is 31 million reasons why you believe in Scott Boris, no matter what it's looking like out there. Major League Baseball teams, you cave in. Every time. It's not 90% of the time that you cave in. You cave in every time. This is why Scott Boros does what he does. This is why Scott Boros is as arrogant as he is. And this is also why Scott Boros is as rich as he is. He waits and you guys cave. That's it. Blake Snell was, you know, a few <sighs> days away from not even pitching in Major League Baseball this year. Talk about the Astros turned him down. The Yankees kept turning him down. Scott Boris said, just wait. I you Just know, wait. There's always a sucker. P.T. Barnum. Do you know who P.T. Barnum is? Yeah, he was like the Barnum and Bailey. Barnum and Bailey, Ringling Brothers Circus. He invented the whole thing way back in the day. Do you know what P.T. Barnum was famous for saying, Scrape? No. There's a sucker born every minute. Well, that's great. That's how P.T. Barnum... One about making his way. Wow. What Scott a great Boris. Guy. Scott Boris, believe me, he lives by the same motto. I think you're There's giving him way too much credit. Oh, get out. Way I'm giving him way credit. too much credit. Yes, because he Blake is Snell by was far. Not he is by far the best agent. Oh, I'm not. He arguing is by that. far the richest. He is by far the most. He has more control over Major League Baseball than probably any single person on earth. And the reason he does is because he sets the ground rules 
and the teams cave to him that is, every see, time. I can't where, believe you're arguing that. No, I'm not arguing that Scott Boris is the number one agent in baseball. That is the facts right there. Okay. But what I'm thinking or what I'm saying here is that this went on far longer than he wants to even but admit. But he could I'm care sure. less how long it he goes on. He still has other clients. These people, like the Giants... The Giants have been panicking all offseason and just throwing money left and, and right. And that's what Scott Boris is banking on. But he doesn't Blake Snell did not want a one, basically a one year deal, a two year deal with an offseason. That's exactly after this what year. they want. They all he wanted want the, they, all, they all want this ability to opt out and renegotiate again and make more money. I don't Blake know. Blake Snell, that. Blake Snell's nobody's gonna get a 10 year contract for a pitcher that's in their 30s. The best you're going to get is what Blake Snell got. I, I I can't believe you're thinking that Blake Snell settled. I think he did. I, I don't think he was anywhere n- near wanting to be on the Giants' radar. I think he took this deal because two. no other team was going to give him this deal, and the Giants wow. panicked, and they handed out the money. Wow. So, But you're trying to tell me that Blake Snell panicked. I'm trying to tell you that all he had to do was sit at home, twiddle his thumbs, and listen to what Scott Boris told him, which was, you just wait. And if you think Blake Snell cares about being ready for the opening day of the season, you got another thing coming. He's getting his $31 million this year. He'll pitch when he's darn well ready to pitch. I don't. Th- I know a lot of Padre fans are already discussing, well, Blake Snell's going to pitch against us in the opening series at Petco Park. I don't Park, see how. And Bob Melvin and all. I don't see how Blake Snell. It's a Snell, week from Thursday. Yeah, Blake Snell's not going to be ready for that. But. Here's the you know, here's the thing. I, that was my first reaction. You want to know my reaction? That's my yes, reaction. I do. Scott Boros dominates Major League Baseball teams once again. Victory, Scott Boros. Loser, Major League Baseball teams that claim to have no money but always seem to find thirty million dollars for Scott Boros clients. And believe me, Jordan Montgomery will be next. They all, everybody worked out. Everybody worked out. Did it take a little longer? Maybe longer than in the past, but the result was the same. Not really. Not really. Because, okay, well, because you're, you're, trying to, you're trying to, you know, come up with Blake another Snell angle Do you think wants here? to go through this again next year? Do you think he wants to not know where he's going to play until a week before the season again next year? What does he care? I think he cares. You do? I think I think I every think player wants guys to care. be in a camp so they can get ready for the season. I really don't rather think than so. sitting at home and waiting. Not if for a one year if, deal. Then don't be a Scott Boris client. If you want to be, if you want, if you want to know where you're going to play, if you want to sign early, if you want to settle for two or three years at less than your value, then get another agent. But if you want to, if you want to make, and maybe the, he will after this. It, maybe, well, that'll tell us. That'll tell us if he gets a different agent. Then maybe you are right. But he's not going to get a different agent. He's going to stay with Scott Boris because Scott Boris always gets the most money. And the reason Scott Boris always gets the most money is because he waits. And he he the baseball teams blink first. And they did again. I don't think any team blinked until the Giants freaked out and thought, all right, we need to pay but this money. But what does Scott Boris care where he ends up? He just wants Scott him to end up. Scott doesn't care. But Blake Snell, I guarantee you, did, I, I guarantee you, he was not happy just sitting around waiting for something to happen. Knowing Blake Snell, doesn't he wow. seem like a guy who would rather be in with a team then getting he ready? Have, then he shouldn't have had Scott Boris. He made a big mistake, but he's had Scott Boris for a long time. And he stayed with him. Because he always gets what he wants, eventually. Hmm. Took longer than normal. I'm shocked that this is your attitude. I am shocked. <laughs> I'm shocked that this is your attitude. Well, that's all right. What if? I mean, we're Chris. We're literally a week away. So all those what? other clients that are waiting for Blake teams. Snell doesn't have to go to spring training, which is a pain in the butt for ninety percent of the players. He doesn't have to be ready for opening day. He can ease himself in. And when he's ready to pitch four innings, he'll pitch four innings. And when he's ready to pitch five, he'll pitch five. And by midseason, he'll be up to six innings, which is his norm. And he'll make a run at the Cy Young Award again. What's he in a, what's he in a hurry for? He didn't get anybody out in April last year anyway. You know what he's in a hurry for? Four years instead of one. So you're telling me, Chris, you're negotiating. Are you going home? 
Is that why you just picked up the keys? (laughs) They almost almost (laughs) fell off the table. You're telling me you're negotiating with the radio station and you're like, I would like three years because that gives me some security. And they're like, no, we're only willing to give you one year. You're going to continue to hold out. I don't know. You're you're, you're gonna asking have to a cave. totally different. You're gonna you're have asking to cave. a totally different question. I, I get, yeah, you're but you're trying right. to tell me that you think Blake Snell caved in. I'm telling you, it was baseball teams that caved in, and in this case, it was the Giants. Well, better the, the Giants than anyone else. And if you're the pot, why? Because I don't think this is going to be a good thing for them. All right. I, I, I would be concerned that you have to face the Giants in your division, and they now have the top two finishers in the NL Cy Young balloting on their team. I think that's a nice feather in their cap. They also have a guy who's favored to win Rookie of the Year as their third starter, Kyle Harrison. I think it's Kyle. I could be wrong, but it's Harrison. I think it's Kyle. Anyway, it the, Giants got, right. the Giants got a, a lot better. But I will say this to Padre fans. And then you answer it during the break in your own mind. <laughs> well, I've got to get to a break. I know. I know. And I know you're going to interrupt me three more times. I'm not so going I have to. to. I have to. Chris get there. is in a good mood today, everybody. I, I have swear. to get there quickly. I swear. Have to get there quickly. Here's your question, Padre fans: Would you rather have Dylan Cease for eight million or Blake Snell for thirty-one? I mean, that's an easy answer. Well, I don't know if it is. Gwen and Chris coming back. We will uh, check in on the UAB Blazers, the Aztecs' first round opponent. Going to be joined by Evan Dudley. Yes, good old Evan from <laughs> AL.com next on Gwen and Chris.
Everybody's got a bracket. Fill it out. Get in our little uh, station contest. We're not giving anything away. Bragging rights, people. Bragging rights. That's what it's all about. Gwen and Chris, Crisello, Matt Scraby, together in our Odyssey Palace studios today. Uh, Tony Gwynn Jr. is in, well, he's far away. He's far away. He is. Seoul, South Korea. He's probably still sleeping as we speak. Where it is 6.39 in the morning. That's true. On the day of the first Padre game of the season, right? Because it's 6.39 in the morning there. They will play tonight. Good point. Korean time. Good point. So, yeah, it is game day. (laughs) It is the start of a new Major League Baseball season. But you know what? I'm excited about that, but not nearly as excited as I am about March Madness. And we didn't mention this before because, and I know we have a guest there and I don't want to keep him waiting, but we should be pretty excited and feel pretty lucky in San Diego. The Aztecs have now made this kind of a yearly event getting into the March Madness. Now that has been the case for the last 11 or so years. But it wasn't always that way, Scrape. No, oh, I know. Aztec basketball used to be bottom of the barrel. There was no chance of going to March Madness. Now we kind of expect it, and we should never take it for granted. Uh, this year, the Aztecs' first round opponent will be UAB, Alabama, Birmingham, the Blazers. To talk about them from AL.com, Evan Dudley. Evan, thanks so much for your time. We really appreciate it. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Uh, UAB, first of all, they make a nice run. They win the conference tournament, a tournament that I believe was won last year by FAU, right? Yeah. So, I mean, that's a nice that's a nice little, you know, feather in your cap. I mean, if they can only do what FAU did last year, that would be something. But was this team going to be an NCAA tournament team prior to the tournament? Uh, probably not. They, uh, took a few bad losses, a couple bad losses in out of conference and a couple in, uh, uh, during conference play. But I mean, they got a home wins, uh, against FAU and Memphis, uh, and a home win against SMU. They, uh, swept North Texas. So they had a, re- they came in with a, I believe a 12 and six conference record into the tournament. They were a four seed, had the double bye. Uh, so they they were kind of good to go, but they, they still had to win the tournament to get into the uh, into the tournament, but I think they probably would have got an NIT nod had they had they not won the conference tournament. Yeah, and one thing I don't think everybody rel- remembers, or certainly not around here, don't remember. Last year they were in the NIT final. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, so they, out, so out they in Las had, Vegas. Yeah. So they had some pretty good postseason success last year in the NIT. Were they expecting a good seat? I mean, was this you know going to be kind of a good year for them coming in, or did it did it surprise anybody that they had the year they had? Uh, I'm not so sure it was surprising as it was sort of a mystery uh, going in. Uh, lost a lot of pieces from last year. Obviously, you lose Jelly Walker, who was one of the top scorers in the nation last year. Uh, Trey Jemison, who's currently with the Memphis Grizzlies, uh, uh, got a two-way contract with those, guy, those guys, so he's doing well. So there's a couple big pieces on that team. Uh, but they brought in a whole bunch of, uh, you know, transfer guys, some guys from the JUCO ranks, uh, uh, notably the actual Lindelberg, who is a walking double-double. He's got 19 this season. Uh, so, I mean, it was kind of a mystery coming in, but the, the pieces were there. The talent was there. It was just about trying to get them fit into the right place. And and there were a lot of bumps along the right, on long, <laughs> along the journey. But uh, uh, probably like the about the last week of the season, they started really putting it together. And uh, uh, you kind of saw it the last couple games of the season into the conference tournament and uh, how they were playing, how they could uh, respond to adversity whenever they met it, uh, if they had a scoring drought or uh, or allowed someone to get a run on them. So, I mean, it's a uh, – you know, it was something that's been being building, and they are they are peaking at the right time. That's exactly. What I mean, that's what other teams do when they win championships; they peak at the right time. We're talking to Evan Dudley here of AL dot com, and just curious because I'm not going to go into this game thinking the Aztecs are going to win easily. But what kind of information? What what are the UAB people saying about this matchup against San Diego State from your side? Uh, well, UAB will, uh, I mean, they'll take a lot of the underdog grow, uh, looking for an upset. Uh, they've had some major ones in their past. Uh, this is the 17th appearance for, uh, UAB. So they're, so they're not new to the NCAA tournament. They are uh, one of the mid majors who's been there quite a few times. Uh, they've met the San Diego state, uh, before once uh, a long time ago when, uh, the current head coach was a player at UAB, uh, 
believe he put up 29 points in that game as a win for UAB. Uh, but, you know, it, you know, it's just become a, you know, a, a bigger thing with Andy Kennedy. He's been able to return it to, to the bar, the Bartow standard, as he puts it, uh, Gene Bartow, who took over for John Wooden at UCLA uh, and then went to UAB to start the program itself. Yeah, he did well down there. I recall, I mean, this is going back, but UAB, I think, took out Virginia one year, way back when, Evan. I mean, that might even be before your time. But uh, uh, I believe so, and I know they they knocked off a uh, number one seed Kentucky back yes, in uh, I think that was two thousand two. Yes, they did. Yeah, Alabama, Birmingham, the Blazers. Uh, tell me, give me. You talked about the the double double machine, uh, Lindeborg. Uh, they look like. I mean, from what we're seeing and reading, that they're they're you know they're an offensive type team. They don't they don't don't get in your face as much as they'd like to defensively, but they can score a bunch. And uh, they hit the glass. I mean, that's what I've been hearing all week. Rebound, a lot of time their best offense is a missed shot. Uh, absolutely. I mean, they're they're not the most efficient shooters, but they can get on good runs, and uh, their offensive rebounding really helps, uh, really helps that. They're one of the uh, top offensive rebounding teams in the nation. And that's kind of what they uh, make their mark on and, and get to the foul line, making their foul shots. Uh, uh, they Like you said, they don't play defense as well as they would like to, uh, which is something uh, Andy Kennedy likes to – hang his hat on, but, uh, you know, that's just something he's, he's having to grow with these guys. A lot of Juco guys, so they're having to learn to defend guys on the Division One level, but their offensive prowess is uh, still very noticeable. Uh, you had Alejandro Vasquez uh, go off for a career-high 29 in the conference tournament final against Temple. So they got guys who can break out, who can score. Uh, but like I said, you know, offensive rebounding, getting to the foul line, these are their, their strengths and what they're going to, uh, you know, try to uh, uh, do with San Diego State. Talking to Evan Dudley here of AL.com, getting a little preview of the Alabama-Birmingham. I think, are they the Dragons? The Blazers. The Blazers. The Blazers. Why would I ever do that? Do your research, Chris just Will gave you? me the look into my – Do like, your research. You are dumb. My goodness. Uh, basically, what I wanted to ask – that was embarrassing, actually. Yes, it was. Uh, what I wanted to ask is uh, <laughs> what kind – like – Jaden Ledee, third team All American. He has been having his way all season long with everyone. Is there? Do you think that there's a guy on UAB that's going to be able to match up with him, or are they going to have to do some double teams? What do you think is going to happen with that matchup? Uh, well, well, what Andy Kennedy likes to do defensively, even though they might not have uh, been able to do as well uh, earlier part of the season, is they change a lot. They change defenses a lot and constantly. They'll they go into a one three one a lot, and they. Uh, they do they they do probably their best work in their one three one, but they'll switch up from man to man, uh, go into a zone, anything to kind of throw you off and get you off your game. Uh, so that's kind of going to be their thing. Now, now they might try to uh, double up at times, do a few traps here and there, but I but you know they'll just try to change defenses on you to uh, keep you second guessing more often than not. All right, I'm suitably nervous now. <laughs> I, I am. I mean, he said the one thing that has been the Aztec one of the Aztecs uh, poisons this year. It's been the one three one. I they don't the Aztecs don't do great against the one three one. As a matter of fact, if I'm UAB, I might play the one three one from the opening tip until the Aztecs prove to me that I shouldn't play it anymore. Uh, we're joined by Evan Dudley, AL.com. And they hit the glass, as he said. The Aztecs lost the Mountain West Conference Championship game for one reason and one reason only. Because they couldn't defensive rebound in the last five minutes of the game. And UAB scored over 90 points in seven victories this year. So it's a high-flying team, Evan. Uh, yeah, I don't think they're going to be too worried about San Diego State, especially since they played FAU, which was another team in the Final Four last year. Exactly. Uh, it's, it's really strange how it kind of worked out. Uh, and uh, if they were able to advance past uh, San Diego State, there is a uh, in-state uh, foe, Auburn, waiting for them if Auburn gets past the L. Yeah. Uh, not to mention Alabama in the same uh, in the same area, not in the same region, but in the same uh, city for the games. It's a uh, it's going to be a crazy weekend for uh, all, all kinds of uh, fans from Alabama. Yeah. Well, we we beat Alabama, as you know, last year. So we're about. Oh to, yes. We're, we're about, I very much know, but that is my alma mater. So oh, I very much, I very oh, much no, know that. Oh no! Well, thank you for coming on, even though it's yeah. a San Diego State. Yeah. Thing. It was a very uh, respectable effort from your guys. Uh, they were uh, quite big and uh, did what they needed to do. Yeah, that I was, got a question that was a great about upset. Alabama. Uh, Nate Oates just got extended. What is the thought on Nate Oates as the head coach of the Alabama team? Down there. Uh, well, 
I could speak as a fan and yeah. say that we want to keep them and we don't want them to go anywhere because only a few years ago I was I was in Coleman Coliseum when we were the top seed in the NIT and lost to Norfolk State at home. So uh, even though this is somewhat of a down year for us, uh, we're still a four seed. Uh, yeah. We still have a good selection, a good bracket in. So uh, I'm not too worried. Uh, I'm very happy. Uh, this is probably the best success we've had year after year uh, consecutively in this short amount of span. So, uh, you know, and I like his system, you know, shoot three, go inside, you know, you know, throw away all the mid range stuff, just go for what works. Yeah. Alabama, they, they're one of the few teams that scores more than Alabama Birmingham. So they score a ton. All right. Well, good luck to uh, UAB Evan. Thanks for a nice, some good insight into the Aztecs opponent. Uh, we'll see everybody in Spokane on Friday and uh, best of luck. And uh, thanks for uh, giving us a little uh, look at the, uh, at the, the dragons. No, come on, Chris. <laughs> you really you call them it? the dragons. You know, I knew it was you, the Blazers, and I made a mistake. You can call them the Southside Dragons. Ooh, that's, a, that's, a new, okay. that's a nickname we have around there. See, I was uh, half right, Chris. You were half right. <laughs> hey, thanks, Evan. We appreciate the time. Thank Enjoy you, the Evan. tournament. Glad to have, glad to be on, guys. You appreciate betcha. it. Thank you, sir. Evan Dudley, AL.com. A little preview of uh, UAB. Yeah, I'm not kidding when, he, when uh, he's got my attention because the Aztecs against the 1-3-1 are not great. They're just not. They got, I mean, I'm sure they're going to practice it like crazy, but that is not something they're great at. And if UAB plays 1 3 1 and mixes up defense, they may not have to be good on defense. That 1 3 1 may cause the Aztecs some problems. It's I like be, his accent. Yeah. He had a, he had a, he had, he had, had a good a, Alabama a good twang. accent. If I, if twang. I had an accent, it might be from like Alabama. Or you know, the first thing he said when he hung up the phone was, don't you? What? The guy doesn't even know who we are. He called us the Dragons. Okay. He got a good chuckle out of that. You but... talk about showing your opponent no respect. That is the that is the easiest way to show no respect by not even that knowing their not nickname. That's not a disrespectful thing. Their logo is a dragon. So how can I think that's actually the blazer? What is a blazer anyway other than someone who Yes, Chris just gave me the eyes. Thanks. Thanks. And then he brought it up again. Can't take you anywhere. I asked the Nate Oates thing to see if we could get a uh, hot take, but I knew he well, was Well, he's an Alabama say, fan. I know. As so soon as he said the, that, I was like, oh, he loves him. Yeah, he loves Alabama. So he's an Alabama guy. I'm sure he's not going to agree with me or you that Nate Oates is, uh, is lacking sometimes when it comes to doing the right thing. As long as it benefits his program, <laughs> that to Nate Oates is the right thing. Yes. At yes, Alabama. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Aztecs UAB game is Friday morning, 1045. You know, the Aztecs played some early games this year. Thanks to CBS Sports they sure have. Network. I think they had an 11 a.m. game against New Mexico. I think they had a noon game again. Anyway, that part of it is not a concern. But UAB playing a good 1-3-1 defense. Now I'm worried. Now I'm getting a little worried. He said they switch it up all the time. So. Yeah, but they're not going to switch it up if it's working. But I mean, no, no coach is that stupid, and I'm sure their coach is pretty smart. I mean, Brian. So Dutcher, he's going to go to one three one. We're going to stink against it. He's going to stay in it. Brian, I'm, uh, Brian Dutcher, uh, you're, you're. I'm just realizing the rabbit hole that you're going. I know. Down. I'm all worried now. Brian Dutcher, now this we're, we're going home thing. in the first round. Throw it to Jaden Ledee and just let him shoot every single time. Yeah, well, Brian Dutcher is going to not do that either. Cause... By the way, Brandon on the chat says, a blazer is a jacket for a suit my supervisors at work wear, <laughs> <laughs> which is hilarious. It's also a Chevrolet car or truck. Oh, or you're whatever. right. It is. It's an so, SUV. Get with it, will you? Why the Y, Dragon? Oh, never mind. I can't believe you did that. Chris gave me the look. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. I am so embarrassed. The uh, Gwen and Chris show out in San Diego, those guys don't have a clue. Like this, Those can you guys believe I did an interview clue. with the San Diego guys and they thought our team name was the Dragons? Well, if if we were doing if all right, if they asked you to do an interview in Alabama tomorrow, yeah, because yeah, yeah. you're a San Diego expert, sure, or something, and they said, "What do you think? Uh, are the Toreros going to play man to man?" That's not what I did though. <laughs> I said UAB are the Dragons, right? And then I was told I was wrong. So I didn't necessarily say that they were the dragons, but I get what you're saying, Chris. Uh, the answer is no, I wouldn't be offended if they were talking to me and they're like, is there, is their name the Toreros? I'd be like, no, their name's the Aztecs. Well, you don't have to be offended. The, the offense is going to come from all of the people around that program that he's going to tell this to. 
And McKee 23 says their previous mascots were a Viking and a rooster, apparently. That's way too much knowledge on UAB basketball. <laughs> I, I, I need to need. know that. Thank you. All right. UAB Aztecs Friday morning. Tournament starts tonight with uh, actually starts in about a half an hour. Howard and Wagner. Yeah, it could be the name of a do you person, know, Howard I, Wagner. I, I, as someone asked in the chat, <laughs> do you know where those two schools are? Uh, boy, that is a really good one. I'm usually good on this I only stuff. Know, I, I know the answer, but I know. Yeah, don't know. I mean, I kind of know, but I don't. Where's Howard? Howard's in Washington, D.C., and mm -hmm. Wagner, I believe, is in Staten Island. Okay. I believe you. How many colleges, by the way, are in New York City? There's so many colleges. What is the largest city in the country? Most populous city in the country? Uh, Carlsbad, California. No, I know New York, but like it doesn't. I mean, of course they're going to have a lot of colleges. They're the I, biggest okay. city in the country. Okay, dumb, dumb statement for again, me. Again, but again, think about how many you're hitting us with nothing but dumb statements today. Think about well, you're on a roll. <laughs> you're you're being a psychic vampire today. <laughs> I am. Yeah, I'm sucking the life out of you. Yes, you're being a psychic vampire. I apologize for doing that. I didn't mean to. <laughs> Yeah, Brandon makes good sense. I mean, what's a crimson tide anyway? Don't know. Sounds like a bloody wave. And why do they use an elephant as their mascot? What does that have to do with anything? All right, uh, <laughs> enough on Alabama. You sure? I feel like we're going to come back to this a few Elijah times. Elijah Saunders will be on the show in the next half hour or the next hour or so. Hopefully, Scraby will refer to his team as the Aztecs. I will not be asking he comes him on. anything like that. I promise. Daily Gambit is next on Gwen and Chris. Stick around. So you can refi now, get cash out of your home's equity, wipe out all the credit cards and other high interest loans. You can save hundreds every month with lower payments. Or if you still have a mortgage rate in the threes, you can use low pronto equity express to get the cash you need in your primary mortgage debt. Low pronto can get 50, 75, 100, even 200,000 in just a matter of days. Bottom line, low pronto.
Morocco has got several options to help you erase debt and take control of your finances. Call today. You can even skip the next two mortgage payments. Call Loan Pronto now, 619-207-4336. 619-207-4336. Or go to LoanPronto.com. 619-207-4336. Equal housing lender, NMLS 166-1781. has six. I think Steve Garvey heard me because I haven't gotten a Steve Garvey text since I was complaining. Oh. It's kind of crazy. All right, welcome back to Gwen and Chris. 301 is the time, Chris Ello, Matt Scraby together in our Odyssey Palace studio. Scraby is uh, laughing uh, wildly over here to my left. Yes. You want to let me in on the joke or are you just going to? Well, no, no, no. Here's the joke. Um, so I don't know. Maybe you accidentally closed your camera. I did. Okay. So that's what happened. But you'd rejoin. So I put you back in there, but your microphone was on. So everybody heard me talking about Steve Garvey not texting oh, me. Anymore. Oh, boy. I didn't say anything bad. I mean, I've been complaining about Steve Garvey texting me for he has months been, now. Leave the, leave the kid alone, Garv. And ever since I brought it up last week, I have had zero Steve Garvey texts. No Steve Garvey texts. Leave and scrape you alone. Let the man uh, go about his day. Can't say the same thing about your fantasy baseball group chat, Scrape. Man, oh, those people oh. are relentless. 23 texts this morning on the chain. Did you read them all? I didn't read any of them. For all I know, people were offering me money. I would not, I would never know. I just dismiss all of those. Oh, man. I thought last I week like you were embracing chains. it. I don't like text chains. Last week you were embracing it. I told you you were going to hate this in about two days. I don't like text chains. People <laughs> just going on and on and on about stuff I don't care about. Uh, Gwen and Chris is the program. 302 is the time. March Madness starts uh, kind of unofficially today with the uh, play-in games. Howard and Wagner will start in about a half an hour. Then Colorado State will play Virginia later tonight. Aztecs Friday morning, 1045. By the way, if you're looking for the Aztec game on Friday morning, it is on TNT. So that is, um, let's see, channel 27. Yes. On my uh, Spectrum cable. Yep. That is 245 on DirecTV. And again, if you don't have either of those two services, you're on your own. But I'm sure you'll be able to find TNT Friday morning for that. See, Chris is crazy enough to be the guy who's going to check and see what channel it is on other services just in case he doesn't get to watch it on his service. Yeah, I'll be able to watch it on my service. I've already taped the game. I will uh, join it probably a half an hour after it starts so that I can fast forward through all the delays. I, I just like your watch of sports. I know you do. People don't like how I watch sports, but I watch sports how I like to watch them, not how you would have me watch them. Well, Because if I, I guarantee you 110,000% that if I were the one to start sports later, you would be like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. No, I wouldn't say that because that's what I do. No, I know, but I'm saying so if I the be... rules were reversed, you would think it was dumb. Rules aren't reversed. So what can I tell you? I watch sports how I watch them. I like a DVR. I like to fast forward through delays. I can't wait till DVRs are not a thing anymore. I can't. I, I'm trying to outlast that. <laughs> I'm trying to outlast that. And that was just said out of my dislike of. Yeah, you're just Chris's being, you're just being a sports. hater. Just being a hater, which is what you do all the time. <laughs> 
<laughs> unfortunately. Uh, Padres and Dodgers, that is what you're going to be doing at 2 o'clock this morning. You'll be able to tune in for the Eco Water System Padre pregame show. That's right. With Sammy Levitt. <laughs> Sammy's going to get in here at 2 o'clock tomorrow morning. And if you're going to stay up and watch the game at 3, might as well tune in to the, hang on, Eco Water Systems Padre pregame show. I gotta say, I, I need am... to say that every time now. <laughs> no, please don't. I do. It, no, you don't. I gotta say, the water, Eco Water, is pretty good. You like it? I do. I do. Right. I well, really they're do. They're the sponsors of the pregame show. I have a, a actual like uh, we have a fan, Chris, that is, watches our station from uh, Wales. His name is Welsh Fryer, and he's gonna be here, I think, later in the summer. But he says, as a, as an experienced three AM baseball watcher, there are many options on how to watch this game because he does this from the uk all right the time. yes right so go to sleep early with an alarm before the game firm it with coffee and just sleep after the game oh boy Tougher. sleep before and after the game yeah don't sleep at all and then in parentheses not recommended not recommended <laughs> well here's what i would do if yeah, i wasn't tell me if i wasn't going to the game with you tomorrow morning at seven mile casino at 3 a.m and going to be there for the watch party what i would do is i would dvr the game and watch it when I wake up the next morning. That's, that's how, what I would do. That's how we're different because you know what I would do? Hmm. I would just look for the result and nah. then I would go and I would see stay the away stats. from all results and I would enjoy the game. I'm also the guy who likes to know the ending of a movie before I see the movie. Yeah. Do you read the last page of a book first in case you die while you're reading the book? I always get a kick out of people who do that. They're reasoning, they read the last page of the book. Because they say, if I die while I'm wa while I'm reading the book, I want to know the end. You're going to be dead. Either way, don't I've read never the last heard this page. Of, you've never heard of anybody who reads the last page of a book before because they're they afraid of dying. No, because they they say they want to know the ending in case they die while they're reading the book. If it takes you a month or so to read a book, what if something you're stricken with something? And you that, don't make it. Okay, well, if you're stricken with something, I guess I understand. But if you're just randomly one day, this book is so good. I need to read the last page before I die. People don't do that. They read the last page before they read any of it. Wow, I didn't know that. You've never heard of anybody who does that. That's crazy. People do it. I have not heard that. I'm reading the last page of the book. Just in case, while I'm reading the book, I should meet with a bad fate. But as I've always thought, if you meet with a bad fate, you're not going to know anyway. Exactly. Well, no. If you get me, if you get met with, if you are met with a bad fate, then you'll know all of the world's secrets. So you won't have to read the end of the book. Oh, is that what happens when you meet with a bad fate? Yeah, you go up. You are immediately go up and you learn all the secrets to everything. You meet you with find JFK out who first. Killed JFK. Yeah, you meet with him first. <laughs> meet with him. He probably doesn't know who killed him. Yeah. He. <laughs> never mind. I was going to go in a completely different direction. We better get to the Daily Gambit before we get back to doing conspiracy theories oh, again. Yes. Do you like money? I think about money a lot. Do you like money without doing anything? Uh, duh. Winning. Do you want to make money while watching sports? I think Washington is immortal luck. Washington! Woohoo! If you answered yes, this is your segment. Just don't blame us when you lose. Nothing is ever your fault. It's your game. Take it. Gwen and Chris go through the top bets of the day in The Daily Gambit on 97.3 The Fan. The Daily Gambit is our daily sports betting segment here on Gwen and Chris. Please, everybody, gamble responsibly. Real quick, Chris Castro on the chat says, I've read the last sentence of a book before I start the book to get motivation to read the book. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Castro. That's better than doing it because you're concerned that you might die. Yes. I agree with that. I will definitely agree with it's that. Very strange thought. Yeah. Um, all right. So we made some bets last night, and then we'll get into the bets uh, that we're going to make today later. Boston, they were 15 and a half point favorites over the Detroit Pistons. And uh, Chris chose Boston. I chose Detroit for some stupid reason. Yeah. Boston won by 25, 119, 94. So there was something, close. whatever it was, I think it was like the 25th game this year that the Celtics have won by 25 points or more. 
or whatever it was, 15, 16. Anyway, they're like the all-time record. Wow. In terms of blowout wins. Remember the Celtics won three games this year by over 50. By over three of them? Three of them. It's never happened before. Man, Celtics that's... have really been dominating this year. I, you know, some people, you know, still aren't convinced that they're an NBA champion. I'm not either. You know, they lost both games to Denver. Yep. So Denver's still, you know, my mind, the team to beat, but Boston is uh, hella good. Hella good. Hella good. <laughs> uh, the Warriors were seven point favorites over the Knicks last night. Chris chose the Knicks. I chose the Warriors. Chris was right. The Knicks won by seven, 119, 112. Yeah. Yeah. Lakers nine point favorites over the Hawks last night. Chris chose the Lakers. I chose the Hawks. And I can't pick the Lakers. I have no idea how to predict them, but Lakers win 136 105. See the uh, dunk on the opening play of the game? Of uh, that game? No, I saw Anthony Edwards. No, dunk. everybody saw Anthony Edwards' dunk. No, I didn't see this dunk. Yeah, the Atlanta Laker game, first possession, Lakers turned it over like 0 0 score. Atlanta picked it up, ran down the other end. This guy jumped over Austin Reeves and dunked it. I don't know how to really describe this any better. Who's the player? What was the player I don't name? remember his okay. name, but he his basically how do I say this? His nether regions were kind of in Austin Reeves' face oh, as he was yes. dunking the ball. Okay. So they asked Austin Reeves after the game, what'd you think of that first play? What was your view of that first play? And Austin Reeves said Oh, you don't want my view. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want my view. Oh, man, I just saw it. Jalen yeah. Johnson. Jalen Johnson. Wow, that was pretty good. Yeah, it was pretty say. good. Everybody saw the Austin Ed or the uh, Ant-Man. Anthony Edwards. The Ant-Man dunk, but the, the other one was good, too. That was pretty incredible. I'm watching it right now. And, yes, Austin Reeves does get a whole lot of stuff in his face. A <laughs> whole lot of stuff you don't want in your face was in his face. Yes. Um, All right, I'm 3-0. and You're 0-3. Were there any more? Yes, there's one more. Okay. LeBron James versus Steph Curry in the points. They were both 25 and a half as the over-under. Both of us chose Steph, and both of us were right because Steph had 27, LeBron had 25. So LeBron didn't even go over, but Steph just barely went yeah. over. So I was 4-0 last night. A Good job. Perfect night. I was not. You were 1-3. and three. Yeah. You have a chance to, to make up for it tonight. I need uh, – and then tonight, Kings and Blackhawks. So we'll carry that bet over. We'll and carry then, that one over. I yeah, just we... have to read this real quick, and then it's off to you. Okay. Join 97.3 The Fan on Thursday, March 28th, for the Padres' home opener versus the San Francisco Giants. We'll be broadcasting live from Baja Rick's Cantina, located at the corner of 6th and L in the gas lamp. The festivities kick off at 6 a.m. with Bennett Woods, followed by Annie and Elston from 10 to noon. We'll be giving away tickets to the Padres-Cardinals game on April 2nd. Plus, there will be Blue Moon, Coors Light, and Topo Chico specials, and breakfast served from 6 to 10 a.m. That's Thursday, March 28th at Baja Rick's Cantina on the corner of 6th and L in the gas lamp. Brought to you by Blue Moon. Celebrate responsibly. You know how long I've known Baja Rick? Uh, he actually told me when I met him the other day, he said, tell Chris I said hi. Yeah, I've known him for like 30 years. Wow. Baja Rick was a big uh, Gulls fan back mm, in the day when I was said. the uh, Gulls broadcaster. That's what he said, yeah. And uh, he's got a great restaurant down there. Baja Rick's is, uh, the canteen is fantastic. Great place for the opening day celebration. Now, you and I will not be there because our show – doesn't really take place till the game is over on opening day. Yeah, yeah. You and I will be on after the game. Yes. After Sam Levitt's post game show. Correct. Next Thursday. Correct. But we will be on an extra hour. Did you hear that? Well, you'll be on an extra hour. Oh, you're still here till seven o'clock anyway. Now, Adam and I had a long talk about this. Yes. And uh, I think why did you happen? why did you agree to this? Oh no, it wasn't it wasn't about that. I don't care if you join me for the show. Okay. We were talking about. Which show is going to happen from six to seven? I think it would be really funny to do Scraby Show with Chris Hello. Huh. But why don't we just keep Gwen and Chris going? It we makes can do whatever it you makes like. Sense. It makes sense. But we yes. can do whatever you like. We'll be on until seven from Sam's post game show on opening day, March 28th, until 7 p.m. We will be on. That's right. So uh, that's your uh, okay. Schedule for tonight is get up at two in the morning. Oh, yes. Turn on Sam Levitt's pregame show. Yeah. Drive down to Seven Mile Casino. Yep. Just off the five freeway, Chula Vista. And then uh join us for the uh viewing party. Yeah. Scraby and I will be there. Ben and Woods will be there. All kinds of fun stuff. We'll watch the game. And then opening day next Thursday, opening day in San Diego. Yes. Next Thursday. Home opener. Yes. Get on down to Rick's Baja Cantina. Join Ben and Woods in the morning. Annie and Elston. Maybe you haven't met Annie and Elston yet. That would be a good time to go do that. Definitely. Would go down there and time. say hello. 
introduce yourself. They're terrific. And then after the opening day game, Scraby and I will be on a little later until 7 p.m. Danny says on the chat, hey, Scraby, a Giants fan, welcome to that. I will be there opening day. Oh, yes. Yes, Giants fans are Giant welcome. Giant fans are welcome. Just, just don't make a nuisance of yourself. And just know that you may get some heat from You're people. You're going to be outnumbered. Yes. You're going to be outnumbered. But, but everybody is welcome. You can Oh, Dodger fans not welcome. <laughs> don't say kidding. that because they'll then I'm they'll kidding. really show up. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right, bets for tonight. We got to start with what else? The NCAA tournament. First game starts in about 25 minutes. Who you like, Scraby? Howard or Wagner? Howard is favored by three and a half. I don't really have much of a scouting report on either club. I like Howard. You're gonna go Howard here. Yeah. Give the three and a half. Yeah. All right, just to make it interesting, I'll take the Seahawks. Wagner is a Seahawk? The Wagner Seahawks oh, no, from I'm Staten really, Island. I'm really happy I didn't pick them. I'll take Wagner. Howard, I believe, is the Bison. That's their nickname. Oh, oh, I was like, huh? Yeah. Howard? Who's Howard? And then Howard? Who is Howard? I don't know who Howard is, and I don't know who Wagner is. <laughs> I, was really, I just know they're playing each other. <laughs> really confused there. Yeah. yeah. Second game of the uh, NCAA tip-off uh, tourney tonight. Colorado State is a two and a half point favorite over Virginia. My wife would not speak to me if I didn't pick the Rams. Mm. And as I said earlier, if you're an Aztec basketball fan, even though you don't want to, you should be rooting for the Rams. Yes. It's good for the Mountain West if they win. Um, Virginia really can't score, but it's an ACC opponent. I mean, it's going to be a good game. Oh, yeah. I'll take Colorado State, though. I will I have to because you basically said they wouldn't have made it into the tournament otherwise. They were the last team in the tournament. Yeah, I'm Colorado, Colorado State, State, very last team in the tournament. Uh, NBA tonight: Denver Nuggets at Minnesota. This is a big matchup in the Western Conference. Right now, the Western Conference standings show Oklahoma City a half game ahead of both Denver and Minnesota. All right, it's a three-team race right now to get the top seed in the West. Okay, Oklahoma City on top, Minnesota, Denver a half game back. Denver at Minnesota tonight. Denver's favored by eight. Wow. Uh, who do you like here? Now Minnesota's got some injuries. That's the deal here. Rudy Gobert's been out. I'm gonna go with the T Wolves anyway, just because it, huh? they've been pretty. They've been fighting lately. I'm gonna take the T Wolves too. At home, eight points in a game that means a lot. Yeah. I like that. I will take Minnesota, although Jokic is just – he's awfully good. <laughs> he really is. Uh, last one, uh, Luka Doncic. Doncic? Luka? I don't know how to – I honestly don't know how to pronounce his last name. Do you? Doncic. Doncic? That's what I've heard. He averages 34.4 points per game. He leads the NBA. Tonight is over under is 33 and a half Ooh. at San Antonio. Oh. The thing with this – is that if they blow them out by too much, you may not play the whole game. San Antonio's not very good. But Luca to me, is a guy that runs it up if he can. So I'll say over. Mm. What do you want to do? I'm going to go over as well. You're going to go over. And then, as you said, we had a game carryover from last night. The Kings and the Blackhawks, we thought the game was last night. Yes. It's tonight. Well, I didn't, you know, we did not think. The oh, game I was did. Last night. Yeah. Blackhawks, uh, Kings are favored. I'm sorry, but one and a half. We both like the Kings. We do. The Blackhawks, I believe, have won one road game in the last six months. And it was the one I picked. It was the frankly. one we picked against. Yeah. All right. That's our daily gambit for today. When we come back, Scraby and I will share with you our final four projections. Who do we have going to the final four? Our brackets are very similar. We're not going to go through every game. You have to sit here while we go, well, who's going to win between Colgate, Colgate and, and Yale? Yeah, you don't have to do that. <laughs> but uh, we will uh, share with you our final four and uh, get your brackets out. Elijah Saunders of the Aztecs set to join us at the bottom of this hour. Stick around after traffic. From the
Welcome back to the program. Chris Ello, Matt Scraby, together today in the Odyssey Palace Studios. You know Tony's uh, halfway around the world. We uh, heard from him yesterday from South Korea. He and Jesse Agler will have the call tonight on the radio, 97.3, The Fan, 3 a.m., first pitch, Padres, Dodgers. It's going to be here before we know it. And away we go with the 2024 Major League Baseball season. I know it's for for real. My uh, the, the other fantasy league, the real fantasy league that I'm in, not the one you got me in. Sorry to everyone who. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if they can't take a joke, then too bad. Uh, no, they can take a joke, but you just put a target on your back. Oh, whatever. I, I'm sure I'm not going to do well in your league. Um, <laughs> but in the other league I'm in, they made me cut down my roster of all Dodger and Padre players. Like, I had to decide before tonight which Padres and Dodgers I'm keeping and which I'm cutting loose. Uh, you know we what? Have a, we have a carryover league. I know. Your league is weird, though. Oh, they're serious. They don't want me, They don't want me. you know, starting somebody, and then they go 0 for 4, and then I decide to, after the game to cut them. Hey, you know what? That's just part of the game, everybody. Well, not in my league, man. In my league, that is all hardcore. You know what I Hard feel like core. when there's a when there's a super serious fantasy player in a league, I yeah. just want to ask that person like, why are you so serious about fantasy yeah. sports? Well, we have uh, we have uh, nine of them in my league. Nine? Yes, I'm the only one that's probably not. Like that's why I finish in ninth place every year. You got to get a life, people. It's just a fantasy baseball. Game. I have three fantasy players making their season debuts tonight in the game. Who? Uh, Robert Suarez mm -hmm. is one is my closer. Okay, one of them. Okay, uh, Luis Camposano is oh, my catcher. Love that. And Gavin Lux is one of my middle Oof. infielders. Oof. Hopefully he's able to not throw the ball tonight. Hopefully he goes four for four with four stolen bases. And just four doesn't. Errors. And yeah, four errors that won't cost me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, do the other part. Uh, all right, uh, get your brackets out. Scraby and I filled ours out. And it, it's hardly even worth the paper it's written on, but it's still fun to do. Um, here's a quick preview of what I have. I have four double-digit seeds making the Sweet 16. I have 10 seeded Drake making it out of the East. I have 11 seeded New Mexico making it out of the West. I have 11 seed Oregon making it to the Sweet 16 out of the Midwest. And I have a 12 seed, James Madison, making it out of the South. Scraby, you only have one double-digit seed in the Sweet 16. That would be 11th seed Oregon in the Midwest. Huh. Everybody else is a single-digit seed. Now, as far as our picks for the Final Four, they're eerily similar. I didn't realize this. And we did not, uh, we did not look at each other's brackets in any way, shape, or form. Tell us who you have. Coming out of the East. That is the uh, the bracket that the Aztecs are a part All of. All right. Well, I have uh, the reigning champions, Connecticut. Yeah. Coming out of the East. Beating? Uh, Illinois. As do I. Yes. Where are the you exact the same game. going? Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to put them to the Sweet 16. Okay. I mean, I got to, you know, I got to believe they if they can get this one for UAB that they'll bounce back, knock off Auburn. Aztecs are really good when they have not a lot of time to prepare. That has always been something that they've been very good at. All right. I don't know that they can beat UConn. I just think that's like a, you know, that's like a, what do you call it? The, a mental thing? A mental block? A, mental block. UConn beat them in the Kawhi Leonard year. UConn beat them last year. You know, the thing I, that I just, scares me about the Aztecs is just how they finish games throughout the season. I, it's scary. It's yeah. scary. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. All right. In the West region, I have the fifth seed, St. Mary's, mm. going to the final four, knocking off wow, number St. Mary's to the final four. I'm not sure. They've won like 27 <laughs> out of their last 28 games. They've been very good. Yes. They've been fantastic since the Aztecs beat them earlier this season. I always root for a team on the West Coast, and I'm not – a fan of the top seed in that bracket, North Carolina. I think they they can be had. Mm -hmm. I know that the second seed Arizona can be had. They play clunkers all the time. Yep. So I think this is a wide open bracket. Now St. Mary's could easily lose its first game 
because Grand Canyon is very good. I almost picked them. Yeah, Grand Canyon. but I'm going to go with St. Mary's over Arizona. Who do you like in the Dang. West? Uh, you like I have St. Mary's as well, so we're thinking the same way there. But here's my way out of left field pick. Okay. Dayton to the final four, seven seed. The Dayton Flyers. Every year they're always like, Dayton could be that team. Dayton they have an All American that on that club. I know. They I have know. an All American guy. My cousin went to Dayton and always tells me about how great Dayton basketball is. A little was. of your Ohio background yes. showing up here. Yes. All right. So Dayton. Dayton. You've got UConn against Dayton. Yes. And, and let me just. Oh, I'll, I'll and I have UConn you. against St. Mary's. Okay. In the South, who do you have? Final, uh, who's going there? Houston, Kentucky, and I have Houston beating Kentucky. Kentucky's Houston beating Kentucky. scary, though. I have Houston beating Texas Tech. All right. Because I have Texas Tech knocking out Kentucky earlier. But I think I think that's the easiest bracket of them all. Yeah, that one went To me, easy. Houston is the only real threat to come out of that bracket. I really don't see anyone else. So we'll see. Uh, Midwest, I think you and I have the same here. Go ahead. No, we don't. I have Tennessee over Purdue. Ah, you have Tennessee over Kansas because Purdue, Purdue is Purdue. Purdue they always Purdue. choke around this time of year. And you're right. They have the best basketball player in the country, but all he is is just really tall. He's really tall. And Purdue has lost the last three tournaments to a 16 seed, a 13 seed and a 15 seed. They don't, yeah, they, they should win games and they just don't win those games that they should win. Jay Billis said it the other day. They play not to lose in the tournament yeah, rather than that. playing to win. We'll see if Purdue so can I have turn Tennessee it around. Tennessee beating Kansas. Right. For so Houston, then, Kansas. Okay. No, you have Houston versus Tennessee. Oh, sorry. Yes. Duh. I also have Houston versus Tennessee. Really? Okay. And I took Houston. Me too. I have UConn over St. Mary's. Okay. I have UConn over Dayton. So we have the same final. Connecticut and Houston? Right. Who'd you pick? I picked UConn to double champ. I took Houston. Really? To upend UConn at the wire. So that's where it's going to all come down to for us, Chris. We'll see. The championship game. What was your, your tiebreaker score? Mine's 72-68. So that's 140 points? Yeah. A little higher, but I should not I should reconsider because Houston doesn't score that much. I did 154. All that right. could cost me. That could cost me. <laughs> Let's be honest. If I'm good enough to get into a tiebreaker scenario, yes, I'll be happy. It, that is true. All right. Aztecs, Elijah Saunders, part of another brilliant season on the Mesa. He will join us when we come back on Gwen and Chris.
All right, welcome back to Gwen and Chris. 3.38 is the time. Chris Ello, Matt Scrape, it together in our Odyssey Palace studios. It's almost become, almost become an annual rite of spring for us here in uh, San Diego. To be looking forward to an Aztec run in the NCAA March Madness. Of course, last year's run may never be matched again. Or then again, maybe it will be matched again this year. Anything's on the table. That's true. It I mean, there was there madness. Was, yes, there was no way we were sitting here last year at this time thinking they'd get any further than past the Sweet 16. After all, the number one team in the whole tournament, Alabama, was in their bracket. Yep. Well, this year the number one team overall is UConn, and they're in their bracket. So Aztecs, who knows? How about running it back? That would be something. That, they don't would forget, have to really catch fire. Though. Don't forget Butler did it in 2000. I believe it was 10 and 11. Butler was a Cinderella. They went all the way to the final. Very next year, they did it again. So, But you're right. The Essex are going to have to catch a little fire here, start uh, knocking down some outside shots. One of the guys who can do that is Elijah Saunders, uh, the native – of Phoenix, Arizona. Sophomore season just completed for Elijah Saunders, or regular season part completed. Averaging about six and a half points a game. Third on the team in three-point buckets. And we are really excited that uh, he's spending a little time with us on the program right now. Elijah, how you doing today? Good to have you on the show. Good. I'm doing good. Uh, thank you guys for, for having me. Absolutely. All right, I know that you guys are focused on the job at hand. You got to, you know, Friday and everything. And we're going to ask you about that, but I, I, I can't help but go back to the picture of you and miles bird racing off the bench to celebrate with Lamont Butler. I know it's been brought up to you. Is there anything you guys can take from last year's run to the championship game that might be able to help this year's team? Yeah, I would just, uh, I would say the main thing was the perseverance of last year's team. Uh, a lot of games, I felt like we were down, down at halftime even. Um, just just understanding that the game is never over. You know, that's that's the one thing I took from last year's team. We, anytime we were down or struggling or couldn't score, you know, the guys were always positive and always believed that, you know, if we get stops, we're eventually going to score and come back and, and we can win every game. Talking to Elijah Saunders here of the Aztecs basketball team. They're going to be playing on Friday against UAB. And just to kind of stay with last year's team, I I, I guess what I am curious about, because you were a freshman last year, you go to the national championship in your first year. That's awesome. That's very cool. What can you take from that experience, do you think, for the rest of your career? Because that came at the beginning of your college career, and I'm sure you probably learned something. Yeah. Yeah, that was – Definitely not what I expected my first year to be like to go to the national <laughs> championship. Um, but, you know, it was, it was a great experience. And, you know, it really just shows me, it really just showed me this year, especially how hard it is to, to do it. You know, last year we won the conference uh, in league play. We won the conference championship. You know, we went to the final four. So that's really all I expect. I expect to win the league. I expect to win the league title. And we didn't do it this year. Um, you know, it just shows you how much work goes into to winning and being successful and, um, you know, how much just, – just how important, you know, the work is. Elijah, take us, uh, if you can, you know, into the locker room a little bit. And uh, who's been speaking up this week? Is it Tramel, Ladee, Lamont Butler? Have you guys just relied on Coach Dutcher? What's kind of being said around the guys as you head into this, you know, an, into another run? here in March. Yeah, all those guys. Um, <laughs> you know, a couple of weeks a couple of weeks ago, Micah uh talked to some of the guys um after practice one day just you know, this is this is important to us. You know, last year's team, you know, we're a new team. Uh, you know, we're we're a different group. Still some of the same guys, but you know, everyone has something to prove. And you know, knowing that this is, you know, Darion's for sure last run, uh, Jaden's last run, uh, Jay Powell, you know, they're out of eligibility after this year. So, you know, the next game we lose would be their last. So, um, you know, just trying to give it all we got for them and, um, you know, come together right now is, you know, before we make a run in this tournament. 
Talking to Elijah Saunders here of the Aztecs basketball team. And Elijah, you guys, um, uh, not by design, but you, you do get behind and then you make furious comebacks. Is there any, is there any, like, what does Coach Dutcher tell you when you guys are down by, say, 12, 14 points? What does he tell you to get back into, get you back into the game? Just keep defending. Um, keep defending. Uh, keep, keep being patient on offense. You know, I feel like in games where we've gone down and not been able to uh, come back and win were games where we kind of were less connected as a team. So, uh, you know, we don't want to be down, but when it happens, just come together as a team and, you know, get stops and play together on offense and we'll be good. You know, Elijah, I mean, you're giving us heart attacks in all of these games by falling behind <laughs> by so much. So stop doing that, will you? Please tell everybody that Uncle Chris said to – Stop falling behind. Elijah Saunders is with us. And, uh, you know, you were one of the guys that, you know, from last year's team that was able to, you know, make it into the starting lineup this year. And, I mean, you know, what a thrill to join the starting lineup with Lamont Butler and with uh, Tremel and Micah and, and Jaden Ledee and, and everybody coming off a national championship run. And, um, you know, I thought you did great. And then you had a little bit of a slump. And Brian uh, Dutch decided to bring you off the bench. And that seems to really kind of work for you. Talk a little bit about your journey, personal journey this season. Yeah. Yeah. Even even as you go into last season, you know, being a, coming from high school, um, you know, always starting all those years and then, you know, not even touching the court um, for, for the end of the season last year. And, you know, it felt like, no one had seen me play, like, especially my family. Like, um, you know, I feel like it had been so long since my family had seen me play. So, you know, I wanted to start this year. That was my goal, you know, even though, you know, not many people <laughs> might have thought I would have started in that Fullerton game. You know, that, that was my goal. Um, but, you know, starting, it, it, I thought it was going to, you know, be the greatest thing ever. Um, you know, make me the happiest person ever. But, you know, it's, it's not what it's all about. It's just about coming in and um, competing and being in the right headspace when you check into the game. You know, I feel like in my worst part of the season this year was a time where I was really just focused on the wrong things in the game, um, you know, overcomplicating it. So um, just refocusing on my headspace this season um throughout times and you know trying to do whatever it takes for us to win because that's that's all that's that's that's, that's all it's important at the end of the day it is that's a uh, very wise stuff from you elijah we're talking to elijah saunders here of the Essex basketball team and my last question for you is when your college basketball career is all over said and done how would you like to be remembered by aztecs fans and that's, um, deep, that's a deep question, Elijah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll I be a spot a little bit. I apologize for that. <laughs> um, I would say a winner. There you, you go. Know, I would say Very I'm. Good. Yeah. I would say I'm off to a good start. Yes, you um, are. But you know, someone who you know just always has a smile on their face. Um, you know, I just love to play this game. I'm blessed, you know, with this opportunity to be at such an amazing school and, um, you know, with such amazing coaches and teammates that, you know, just a winner, someone who's values winning more than anything and um, someone who just enjoys to, to play the game. I don't know what I'm going to do with Scraby over here asking all these deep thought questions, but you answered it very well. <laughs> Elijah did, Saunders is with us. I, Hey, I remember that guy, Elijah Saunders. He was on all of those final four teams. There you go. He was on <laughs> that's all perfect. That, that, that's exactly what they need to say. There you go. He was on all of those final four teams. Uh, Elijah, tell, we talked to some people from Birmingham today. Just get a little scouting report. I'm sure you've seen a lot of film. Sounds like they play a lot of switching defense, some 1-3-1. Uh, offensively, you guys, uh, you know, it's been a little inconsistent. Where are you guys focusing your efforts heading into this game and practice this week? Yeah, uh, in practice today, we saw a bunch of defenses. Um, you know, we had a lot of live segments where we just attacked them differently. Um, they switched defenses throughout the entire game. You know, you might see a 1-3-1, one, 2-3, three, one, three, man-to-man. They might extend it to the full court, 2-2-1. Two, two, um, so 
it's a lot. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's a style that we haven't really seen this year. Um, but, you know, we'll be prepared. We've already um, come up with ways how we're going to attack each defense and, you know, whatever, whatever stone at us, we'll be, we'll be prepared for. Well, I'll tell you one thing. None of us, even the most ardent of Aztec for lifers, and I consider myself to be one of those people having gone to San Diego State, none of us were prepared for what you guys took us through last year. It was a <laughs> wild ride. It was about the most fun I've ever had as a fan, and I'm hoping why not do it again? We really appreciate you coming on the show today. Uh, I talked to Richard, uh, the media relations guy, and he said, you know, Elijah is a very well-spoken well thought out young man. And Richard was right. Yes, we appreciate was. having you on the show, Elijah. Good luck this weekend. We will be watching and uh, we'll look forward to uh, hopefully catching up with you down the road here. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me on. Absolutely. Very good. Elijah Saunders right there. Young man from Phoenix, Arizona, just a sophomore. Scraby putting him through his paces. I, you know, <laughs> I took, okay. okay. I, Elijah, what? What is, is the meaning, the meaning of, life? of life? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I took, was that, that that would have been your next question. It's a good thing we cut no, you off. I'm going to I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. Okay. So when I said Elijah, I I panicked that that oh, wasn't no, his you name. You forgot your question? No, I panicked that wasn't his name for some oh, reason. And so okay. I was like, you gave me this look. I'm like, did I just call him the wrong name? Okay, no one stop me. I'm going to keep going. But uh, I took a ra sports radio class at Palomar College back in like 2008, and John Chelesnick was the yes. the teacher of this class, the sports doctor, the sports doctor. And he, yes. I will never forget this rule, and I just broke the rule: never ask a question that is too difficult for someone to give one answer to. And that's exactly what I did. I should have said something else. He came up big. He did good for him. He wants to be known as a winner, and then. Uh... You know, just be be the guy that we say, oh, yeah, he was on all those Final Four teams. Yeah. yeah. Let's hope that they're on more than one. Uh, very good interview. And uh, we look forward to uh, – I mean, he had a – that's a tough deal to be a starter. And then he's a, he's relied on for his outside shot. Now, he's 6'8". He could play inside. But he doesn't because they got Jaden Ladee. You don't want to put another player no. inside next to Jaden Ladee and box up the area. You want to give Jaden Ladee as much room to operate as you can. So Elijah Saunders has been, you know, mostly a three-point shooter this year. And, uh, you know, he lost the touch there at midseason. But Brian Dutcher, you know, it's an underrated thing about Dutch. But, I mean, he he understands his players and what they need. And that, that to me, is a, always the sign of a great coach, is everybody has to be coached different. You exactly. can't coach one kid the same way you coach another kid. 100%. And he was able to figure out, you know, with the help of his staff, that probably the best move would be for Elijah to sit, watch a little, and come off the bench. And when he started coming off the bench, he's been really good. It was a really good move. Yeah, I, I liked what so, you said. He seemed like, as you said, a very uh, wise individual. And he yeah. seemed like I, I thought it was very interesting when he said, I thought starting was going to be the best thing ever. And right. it, it wasn't. And that's that's honestly like everybody feels that in life. You think you want something and then you get there and you're like, OK, well, this isn't as cool as I thought it was going to be. Wow. So and Brian Dutcher pointed him in the right direction to get him on the right path. What I always learned as a basketball player, and again, I'm not, I didn't play college or anything like that, but NBA. Yeah, I played, I went okay. straight to the NBA. Okay. Right. You, you, from, you uh, were drafted out of high school from Horace Mann Elementary School. Oh, wow. Right to the NBA. You're there. one of those kids, huh? Yeah. Uh, but what I learned is, is it doesn't matter who starts the game, it's who finishes it. And that's honestly the way I think. And I think of the way all the Dutch's kids. The guys that are playing the best that night, the best five, that ought to be who finishes the game. Yeah, you're not going to put your worst players on the floor at the end you of the game. You want them to be at the finish. You need them. The start, it's nice. It's a feather in your cap. You say, yeah. I'm a starter. But I want to be out there at the end of the game. Uh, let's check some traffic before we uh, get to the top of the hour here. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Tadek. Traffic is sponsored by Soapy Joe's. Got a couple of problems in the North County. Eastbound 78 before college. A collision involving a couple vehicles that is over to the right shoulder. Also going to find a collision on the Miramar Road on-ramp to southbound 15. 
Are you ready to suds up for a cause? Chief Bubble Officer Tony Gwynn Jr. and Soapy Joes is bringing a whole new meaning to being a bigwig with their Soapy Bigwig campaign in support of Susan G. Komen. Make sure to visit SoapyJoesCarWash.com to donate today. I'm Kelly Danik with Gwynn and Chris, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. All right, we're coming up on the top of the hour. Again, thanks to Elijah Saunders. Thanks for uh, Richard Stern there at the Aztecs. He's been great. All, yeah, all year long. Making last those year. kids available for us. I know everybody wants to interview one of those kids right now, coaches, etc. Yeah, but we love those. We love this team on this show. Yeah, and I appreciate Richard uh, thinking of us and getting us uh, a chance to talk to Elijah Saunders there. That was really good. And uh, guess what, Scrape? The madness has begun. It has. Yes, Fourteen right. minutes to go in the first half. Wagner twelve, Howard eight. Ah, it just feels good to give a score. From the mountain, from the uh, NCAA tournament, I love it. You really do. I love the NCAA tournament. You, you've you've come out of your shell more and more and more each and every year, Chris. It's and good. We, yeah, it's good. The NCAA tournament. How did you get over the the 2020 tournament being canceled? I honestly now at this point don't I was know in how such a deep it. depression at the time with the whole COVID thing. Oh, so it, that the tournament was just part of it. It was you just, know? all right. Yeah, yeah. I get it. I mean, I, I don't even like to. I don't even like to put the number 20 next to the number 20 it just puts that me in a is chris in just puts show. me in a bad frame of mind can you believe we're four the olympics would have happened twice now chris it was march 10th or 11th of Somewhere 2020 when uh, rudy there. gobert was stricken with the uh with the virus yes and then he went and touched everything. Or no, before the game, he touched yeah. everything, making a big joke. Yeah. But that I was the night it happened. That. I remember I, I was at, I don't want to remember it. I really don't. I don't want to put everybody through it again. Thank goodness it's all behind us. That's all I'll say. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, when we come back, we normally play Christmas the fans at 4 o'clock. Yes. Scraby is calling an audible. Yes. Omaha. 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 A little Omaha here. We've got something, a surprise for you. Ooh. Coming up. Instead of Chris versus the fans. So you're probably conditioned to, to dial in, but you don't need to because we're not going to play Chris versus the fans. We're going to save it for a little later in the show. So special, ugh, special surprise. Easy for me to say. Special surprise coming up next. Stick around for more Gwen and Chris.
All right. Hi. Hey, how are you? 401 at the time. Chris Ello, Matt Scraby together in our Odyssey Palace studios. Tony Gwynn Jr. halfway around the world. In Korea, we're at uh, 3 o'clock this morning. The Padres will begin the 2024 Major League Baseball season. The game is finally upon us. Padres and Dodgers. We are having a, a watch party at uh, Seven Mile Casino. It is in uh, off the 5 freeway in Chula Vista. And I mean right off the 5 freeway. So get on the 5, get down to Chula Vista. I got I to gotta look at the exit for you. That'd be nice if I gave everybody the exit. I get a little nervous because people get lost and then they'll be like, well, Chris Ello just told me to turn right off the freeway. It is right off the freeway. I mean, I like right, right off the freeway. Okay. Seven mile casino. I'm just going to follow your directions. And if I show up, I get, I mean, there. it's right off the freeway. I don't know what else to tell you. It's right there. Just give me the exit. You get off at, uh, looks like, I don't know. E Street. This doesn't help me at all. <laughs> yeah. Not helping me either. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try it myself. Let's see just here. put in your own directions. You'll find oh, it. Oh, now we're all of a sudden back to that. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. It's, uh, it's basically between E and F Street okay. on the five. Well, that sounds great. The five. That sounds great. Sorry. I'm just trying to, trying to get everybody there. We're going to be there at 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, if you're dialing in for Chris versus the fans, hang up. We're going to play a little later. No Chris versus the fans right now. Scraby made an executive decision. He's a producer of the program. Well, there's a good reason for it. The reason is for the surprise that we have for you. The problem is we don't yet have that surprise. Not yet. So we're hanging on and waiting for it. While we wait for the surprise. It's off E Street, Chris. Yeah. If you would just Between check- E and F. Yes. Uh, our group text just let you know. So, All right. It's between E and F. Uh, <laughs> Wagner 19, Howard 10. Yeah, that's the first game in the NCAA tournament. They uh, have 10 and a half minutes to play in the first half of that game, if you're keeping an eye on it. Later on, Colorado State plays Virginia. While we wait for our surprise, let's get you caught up on a couple of things. Uh, NFL, still a big story. Uh, Aaron Rodgers. Oh, my gosh. The next vice president of the United States. And I heard that uh, Aaron Rodgers is taking himself out of consideration for that, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah, according to TMZ, which is my my go-to news source. I'm over TMZ. Don't ever be over TMZ. You'll never know anything. They're creating their own click culture by saying, Kate Middleton's alive. Here's the video. And then in the next blog post. Is the video real? Get out of here. TMZ is the only, the only, uh, the only media outlet I can trust these days. Uh, Aaron Rodgers has a new, uh, new pass catching target. Yes, he does. And everybody York wants you to know about it. Football Jets. Yeah, I know. A lot of Jet fans are like sending notes into the chat. Hey, Chris, look out. Mm-hmm. Here come the Jets. That's right. Dolphins better be worried. That's right. The Dolphins are worried anyway. <laughs> they have plenty to be worried about. They're just worried creatures to begin with. Yes. But, but I don't think you have to worry any extra about Mike Williams, former Charger receiver signing with the Jets. Has a maximum value of $15 bucks one-year contract. Mike Williams is not going to make that. He will be lucky to make $15 <laughs> staying healthy long enough. I, he, I mean, if you're a Jet fan, you don't want to hear this. But Mike Williams has yet to play even more than a half a season once in his whole career. That's my first what thought. What makes was. you think that he's going to do it this year? Yeah, that's my first thought. How many games is he going to play? And it's not his fault, but he does miss a lot of games. Yeah. And he's going to make the Jets better when he's there and playing. He's played seven seasons. He's caught 31 touchdowns. That's an average of about four touchdowns a year. It's not bad, actually. For a guy who's played so few games. Well, my point is, is that's that's how little he plays. Yeah. He's uh he's never made the Pro Bowl. I, I don't I'm not worried about Mike Williams. Now I know Aaron Rodgers can make anybody good, but if that's really the case, then what are you wasting fifteen million dollars on Mike Williams for? Just send anybody out there. If Aaron Rodgers is so good, he can just make you great. Mike Williams, I, I'm not a fan. 
Well, the uh, I'm really not. I'm not a fan of guys that can't play. Your best avail, your best ability is your availability. I agree with you. And he has no ability because he's never available. I 100% agree with you. Now the right. the rumor is that the Chargers with Keenan Allen trading him to the Bears. Rumor is they asked him to take a pay cut. He said no, and then they traded him. By the way, yeah, well, that's Charger football. What is Justin Herbert? Who is he planning to throw the ball to? I have no idea. There's nobody Quentin left. Johnson. That guy was awful. He was not good. The TCU kid? Yeah, he was oh, not good. He was terrible. I don't know who they're going to – are they planning on drafting a wide receiver? Because it always works out to have rookie wide receivers as your go-to and guy. People and say, people say, well, the Chargers don't need a wide receiver now because Harbaugh doesn't care. That's Please. what they say, yes. Yeah, well, they're stupid. Okay. <laughs> you need wide receivers in this day and age of the NFL. Oh, yeah. That's and how Harbaugh's you, not silly enough to not you know move that. the ball. Yeah. Chargers are going to – they're just going to suck. I, I know it's all, you know, Harbaugh's going to change the whole culture and change everything. I don't believe it until I see it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it either. I really don't. Um, Jerry Judy, that la that was last week. The one that that, uh, that surprised me that I did not know was Marquise uh, Hollywood Brown. Chiefs. Yes. You know, see, if I was a wide receiver, that's where I'd want to sign. Put me on that team. Let me run around and have Patrick Mahomes lay it of right course. in my hands. And, and I'll all take the veteran long. minimum so I can win a Super Bowl. Yeah. Smart move, I think. Although if you're Hollywood Brown. Hollywood Brown has not lived up to his hype. He's only right. getting eleven million dollars for one year. That's not a lot. For wide receiver, that's that's Is it a lot? that's good money. That's good money. All right. Uh Rashi Rice is the guy in Kansas City, though. At least he looked like he was gonna be. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So, uh, who's there? Oh, Pacheco is the running back. Yes, Rasheed Rice is definitely looking. I, he's on my list of guys I need on my fantasy football team. Rashi Rice? Yeah, well, you, you're the champ, so we'll just make way for you. Yeah, the champ is here. And let you uh, add whoever you want the to The double roster. champ is here. You are the double champ. Uh, All right, I'm, I'm stalling a I little know, bit because I'm waiting. Go, let's, let's, just, let's just do it. Do what? The game. Oh, Chris versus the fans? Yeah. But, oh, after all that, we're well, going to make everybody call back now? Well, they will. They all hung up. It's not going to be a big deal. They will. Um, and if we have to cancel the game, we cancel the game in the middle of it. We're just going to do this, though, because we got to play and do something. If you had one shot, one opportunity to take down the human almanac himself. Howdy, do. Now is your time. Listen to me, this guy is dangerous. Now is your opportunity to win a prize. Well, I hope you know what you're in for. Chris versus the fans starts now on 97.3 The Fan. All right. 833-288-0973. Give us a call right now. Uh, the, the rules for this game, you have to make it through three questions. Each question will get more difficult. If you get the question right, you move on. If you get it wrong and Chris gets it right, you're eliminated. But if Chris gets it wrong, you move on to the next question or you win. If you're a first-time player, you're on your own on this one. Why? I don't know. Are you mad at me? No, I'm just kind of... I'm, I'm a, I, this this whole segment has kind of been a little crazy. It has. We yeah. we 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 knew that we promised timing... a uh, we promised a surprise that we did not deliver on. So I'm kind of frustrated by that. It's okay, Chris. We will have the surprise. Why don't you just? Do you want to tell people what the surprise was? Yes, Tony was going to join us from uh, Korea, but yes. we haven't been able to hook up with him. And yet, he's on. He's so. on like a meeting. He's got a million things going on. So yeah. we're going to talk with him as soon as we can. All right. But that was our surprise, and it didn't work out. But we tried, people. We tried to give you a surprise. Yeah. In the meantime, we're going to play Chris versus the fans. Your chance to potentially qualify for a trip to Las Vegas, the Fontaine Blue Hotel, dinner for two, all that goes with that. Yes, you have to make it through. I already read that, didn't I? Yes, you did. Uh, if you're a first time, well, I already did that. You too. did that too. All right. So let's just Man, play this ball. whole segment has really thrown all of us off, Chris. Yeah, it has. All right, let's go to our first contestant. Who's I don't been... feel like I'll be able to answer a question now. <laughs> <laughs> let's go with um, Riley. Hey, Riley, Hello, how Riley. are you? Welcome to an impromptu version of Chris versus the fans. Hey, how's it going, guys? Pretty good, Pretty good. sir. You Pretty ready good. to play? Yes, sir. All right, here Please we go. Ready. Should be easy. What team did Blake Snell sign with yesterday? The dirty San Francisco Giants. Oh boy, that was hard. <laughs> no, it's not dirty, but why did you buzz? I'm just kidding. Chris is really upset. Right well, now. the whole segment is going cattywampus I, I okay. now, and now you're buzzing correct answers because he said the dirt. Okay. I'm very confused. All right. Here we go. I'm sorry, Riley. You're in the middle of this, but uh, question number two. <laughs> 
since the year 2000, who's hit the most home runs for the Padres? Um, I'll go uh, Manny. Manny Machado. Stay there. Stay there. I don't even really have a good guess. Really? Honestly, my mind's not working right now. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I think that's good news for our caller, for Riley. San Diego Padre, home run leader since 2000? Yes. Jeez. They won't even won anything since 2000. I don't even have the foggiest idea. Fernando Tatis Jr. I don't know. You know, Chris, it, this doesn't need to affect you so much. Who is it? Oh, I just deleted it. Adrian Gonzalez. Oh yeah, I've and he was him. ahead. He was ahead by just a little bit. Manny could easily break that this season. All right, very good. All right, final go, Riley. question for Riley. Three players had 200 hits last season. Name all three. Three players in what? Major League Baseball? Yeah, yeah, well, no, you get 200 hits in basketball. Ronald Acuna Jr. Okay. Uh, Mookie Bet. Okay. And uh, Freddie Freeman. Freddie Freeman. Stay there. Chris has to get it right. I'll say Ronald Acuna Jr. Okay. Luis Arias. Okay. And Freddie Freeman. Sorry, Riley. That Sorry, is correct. Riley. Riley said Mookie Betts, but that's not it. It was Luis, Luis Arias. Arias. Yes. Don't forget about him. Yeah. Don't he had forget a lot about of, him. He had a... Over 200 hits in only 147 games. So that's kind of cool. Uh, let's go to Mac. Mac, hello. Yeah. How are you doing? Hi, Pretty Mac. good. Are you ready to play? Yeah, ready. All right. Here we go. Question ready. number one. Hopefully you're listening a little bit earlier. Which TV channel did we reference as the one you watch once a year for March Madness? True TV. True TV. I don't right. think he was listening earlier, but he figured it out. He did figure it out. That was figured good it out. Stuff. Good job, Mac. All right, Mac. Here we go. Question number two. What NL Central team has hit the most home runs in baseball since 2000? Wow, 2000. I gave you the yeah. The gave you the division. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Yes. Yeah. Um, Better say team. something because he'll team. buzz you. Team. He'll buzz you. Mariners. Mar Mariners, that great National League Central team. Just kidding. Well, he didn't give away an answer. He didn't. That's You're right. Smart. Oh, that, I, you know what? That's on me. I, I jumped at that too early. Chris, what I National no League Central idea. team is it the uh, most on the But I know that the Great American Ballpark is a band box, so I will say the Reds. Sorry, Mac. Sorry, Mac. <sighs> Reds right. haven't been very good, but no. that ballpark is tiny. It is very small. Yeah. Very small. Okay. All right. Let's go to our uh, next contestant. Uh, let's say Albert. I didn't Hi, get a Albert. chance to screen you, but Albert, are you there? Is that you, Albert? Hello? Hello. Hello. Is your name Albert? Hi. Um, actually, Nick. But Nick. All right. Nick using Albert's Albert. alias. There we go. <laughs> I'm going to put Nick right in there. There we go. Okay, Nick. Uh, all right, Nick, you ready? Yeah. Oh, so I'm a, I'm a first time player. Uh -huh. First time player. And he said it properly. Yes. So we really appreciate that. Here we go, Nick. Question number two. You are the man. Nick. Uh, there's a theme with those, these questions, Chris. Uh huh. What AL team has won the most games since the year 2000? Brother. Ooh. You and your 2000 thing. I know. I know. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Yankees. The Yankees. Yankees. Nice shot. He got it. Uh, Yankees are the ones. I wouldn't have gone with the Yankees. Really? Who would you have gone with? Astros. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. That that is is really he got it. One. So he's uh, on to the next, the final yes. question. Nick, you get this right. You are qualified for Las Vegas. Chris gets it wrong. You're qualified for Las Vegas. Here we go. Here's another 2000. <laughs> Since the year 2000, Fernando Tatis Jr. holds the Padres' single-season home run record with 42. Who is second and hit 41 homers in 2001? Nick. 
Adrian Gonzalez. Adrian Gonzalez. <laughs> Stay there, Nick. No, Chris. it's not Adrian Gonzalez. It's not. Oh, <laughs> I thought it was a. I thought it was a fait accompli. <laughs> no, it was I not. Thought he had that. No, no, I, I buzzed him. The Padres had a forty home run hitter in two thousand one. Forty one. Forty one home runs in two thousand one. Mm -hmm. Wow. Getting old, Scrape. Getting old. You're not remembering this one. Not remembering this one at all. Don't even have a good guess. 2001. Nothing coming to me. Wow. Nick, good for you. Dang. Nick, stay right there. I'm going to need to get your information in the break. The answer, Phil Nevin. Ah, yeah. Good old Phil. <laughs> good old Phil. Phil. Phil will be unhappy that I forgot him, but uh, yeah, I did. He forgot 41 Phil 41 home runs. Yeah. That's a good uh, good. Good power seasons for the Padres there for yeah. a little while. There we go. Stay Those teams right I've kind of put out of my mind because they didn't win too many games. That is back a in the day. That is a bummer. Phil Nevin, yeah, worked a uh, worked a game with him on uh, radio one time. Really? He was a color analyst. Okay. Yeah. How was that? Fun. All right. If I recall, we had a good time. If I recall. <laughs> yeah. You know what's really funny about this old thing is that I've. I've been put into a text chat group with all the kids that I went to elementary school with back in the day. Okay. They have so many more memories than I do. And that makes me feel very old. I don't remember anything about text it. chats. Elementary school need to be eliminated. <laughs> Chris is all of a sudden not happy with the text chat. Get rid of them. All right. Uh, I'll take a break. Our surprise. It isn't a surprise anymore. We're, we're trying. We'll hopefully soon join us from Korea. We're trying to catch up to Tony. It's not working out the same way it did yesterday. No, it's not. <laughs> At least not yet. But don't give up on us. Gwen and Chris continues after a check of traffic. From the
All right, the worst uh, kept secret in uh, perhaps the show's brief history is the fact that uh, our surprise guest is going to be Tony Gwynn Jr. joining us from Korea. Because now you all know that. And guess what? He is joining us from Korea. It is game day, Tony, for the first time in 2024. How are you doing? I am fantastic. Ready for uh, ready for some action, some real action. Uh, yeah, it's pretty 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 cool. Yeah. Uh, any uh, any knowledge of a, of a lineup yet, or anything fun like that that you can share? Or do we have you? Are you privy to any of that stuff? I am privy. I don't know if I'm allowed to privy you guys. Oh, this, no. uh, so this is what happens when Tony's 16 hours ahead in the world. He just gets he news knows who's going to be in the lineup tonight, and we don't. Yes. He can hold it over our head. I mean, have, as I mean, I, I believe uh, yeah. the roster has to had to be in already. Yeah, uh, if, if I'm not mistaken. So okay. I haven't seen that. So. Not sure. Well, mm. is it the thirty man or ro- thirty one man roster? No, they have to pave it to twenty six. Tw- they for the it's game? It's twenty six. Yeah, it's twenty six. But I believe they have a taxi squad here, or somewhat of a kind of a taxi squad in case okay. something happens. Because you're not going to be able to just fly somebody to Korea uh, in these next two days if someone gets hurt. So they have some extras that they could dip into if something an emergency like that happens. Yeah. But uh, yeah, man, I, I I will say that. Um, I woke up this morning or la- yesterday at some point I got on the elevator and, uh, Grand Polly was just grinning ear to ear and I didn't, I didn't put it together at first, uh-huh. but he happened to also be in the elevator with, uh, with Mike Shield and the staff. And he, Mike looks at me, he goes, Hey, we got a big leaguer on the elevator. Uh-huh. And like, very good. It, 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 it calculated, and he was just so happy, man. It, it, that kind of thing, seeing a dude uh, experience that. Now, I wasn't in the room when he was told, but I was on the elevator when he got back from being told. Yeah. And I can, and I know that feel. So I can't give you that little tidbit. That never gets old, even seeing no. that, right? It no. just doesn't. No. Yeah. He, I, I mean, and it was, it, and it, and it was cold for him because he couldn't actually call his parents because it was like sometime in the morning back at home like they couldn't they weren't even oh that's yet. So funny i would have had to wait the like, parents for that one <laughs> I, to- I told him i told him just that i was like man you better ring that phone wake somebody up yeah he said he tried he said he tried no one answered. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah you know a lot of mothers though would panic getting a call in the middle of the night so you don't want that's to, true you don't want to make that's them nervous true. but uh all right. Well, that's exciting. Uh, what's the uh, plan for the day? Just normal, every, pretty day, or uh, is it normal, or is it no way it can be normal because it's there? There's no way it can be normal. Okay. Even 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 if we're at home, it, it's not opening day is anything yeah. but normal. Right. And so, as you guys know, it's it's usually my my least favorite day uh, of the year in terms of you know how much riffraff is going on before games. You don't really. You can't really settle into your normal routine because there's just so much going on. I wrapped my mind around it. That's probably going to be on t- to the tenth power here in Korea. Um, but it's always once the game gets rolling, it's always good. Uh, Blake Snell signed with the Giants. I'm sure you guys uh, saw that news. Um, <laughs> yes, I was saying to uh, to Scraby, we were having. I don't know if we were having an argument. Scraby was just more thinking that. Blake Snell got the bad end of the deal here. And my feeling is that Scott Boros wins again. I mean, he, you know, waited it out. And finally a team basically gave into his terms, give or take a few million. But uh, what do you think about Blake going to the Giants? I mean, we're going to get to see him again. That's for sure. I don't know that it's, it's give or take a few million. I mean, maybe give or take a few years. Okay. Uh, yeah. they, they they got it because I mean what thirty one million uh, uh, a pop, yeah, it's nothing to sneeze at. That's certainly sure. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know that there was a, a number bigger uh, out there for him. So, I I think it's for it for both sides, right? Scott obviously gets to continue to be uh, the agent is, although there is some there's some discourse going on according to the reports that came out about the PA trying to force uh, one of the lead negotiators out of, they want to fire basically. Yeah. Um, 
I don't know if you guys saw that story. It kind of broke during the afternoon here yesterday uh, that a lot of the players are upset with how free agency went this year, and they want somebody to answer for it. Now, I don't know that it, according to the story, Tony Clark wasn't willing to to go there just yet, uh, but there is some uh, some some folks who who aren't happy about how free agency went. Now, that being said, uh, Blake gets you know a two year deal, probably not what he initially wanted, but he also gets to to kind of re enter the free agency market again uh, in two years, and so uh, and at the and at the same time, he gets to make thirty one million a year. I think that's a a, a big number for him, um, and for as I said, for Scott Boris, he continues to to be able to say, hey, I, I get guys the top dollar. And for the Giants, I think, you know, you start to kind of pull the way and look at the offseason they put together. Um, it, it's shaped up to be a lot better than I think all of us initially thought it was. Yeah. I mean, the NL West this offseason, we added Yoshi Yamamoto, Shohei Otani. We added uh, – the uh, Teoscar lefty Hernandez. Teoscar Hernandez. That's the Dodgers side. We added uh, uh, Eugenio Suarez with the uh, Diamondbacks. Oh, that's right. Yeah. We added uh, the lefty pitcher for um, Rodriguez, Eduardo Rodriguez for the Diamondbacks. Yep. And then yep. we add all these giant guys. Matt Chapman comes in the division. Blake Snell stays in the division. Uh, I I kind of feel like I'd rather have Dylan Cease at eight million over Blake at 31. That's not a knock on Blake. He was he couldn't have been any better last year. But I think the Padres did okay in that exchange, Tony. What do you think? Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, you knew you were losing Blake Snell, like right? so that wasn't really an option. Right. Um if if you were to tell us, "Hey man, you guys we, we know we're not going to be able to sign Blake Snell, but we're all going to add Dylan Cease to to the rotation instead." I think everybody takes that, knowing that you can't have Lake Snell, right? So uh, this is, I think that's a, a, as I said, when the deal went down, we talked yesterday, that's a big, that's a big, big coup for for the Padres being able to add him to uh, their rotation, not just this year, but also next year. You know, he's still under control. So um, I, I think given the circumstances, given the money, it's a good deal. Good, good trade off, I guess. Pretty good. good. As good as you're going to get for sure. Uh, Tony is uh, calling the game tonight at 3 in the morning. Uh, we're going to be uh, watching down at the Seven Mile Casino. We're having a viewing party. Are you guys going to stay? Are you guys going to be able to stay awake? I, I will, but can you believe this? That Does this surprise you that Chris has been gung-ho I am going for like the past week now? He is definitely going to this. I'm not going to... Chris, is there is there is there a, a game plan for this for you? Are you going to take no. a nap at some point? No, no, I have no game plan. I'm just going to go to sleep at my normal time, and I'll wake up in the middle of the night. I always do. Oh, okay. And okay. then I'll okay. instead of going back to sleep, I'll just put some clothes on and drive down to the Seven Mile Casino. That's my plan. <laughs> Thank you for putting clothes on, Chris. That, well, awesome. I will put clothes on, Scrappy. Yes. Ha -ha. <laughs> you are just hilarious. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, you're welcome. No, uh, that's my plan. I, I, <laughs> Tony, we need you real. back. I know. Scraby and I are at each other's throats. We can't. We were yelling at anymore. each other about Blake Snell and Scott Boros earlier. It's not and... Boros. Uh, Boros. Pronounce it right, will you? Oh, oh, I'm the one. I'm the one. Learn how to pronounce the guy's name. We did. We talked to. Uh... He's only been Scott Boros for I don't know five years now. Let me tell you something. Scraby had one of the all-time disaster oh, questions today. Up. Sorry, I have to. We had Tony a guy from, this, we had a guy from, U we had a guy from UAB on yes, uh, this mo yesterday, earlier in the show, talking about the Blazers. Scraby asked him, what is your uh, nickname? Are you guys the Dragons? <laughs> I'm like, way to be prepared. <laughs> no, he did. Yes, he did. I yes, did. he did. I did. It was very embarrassing. I didn't know how to recover. Because he also Chris asked Elijah Saunders uh, what the meaning of life was, basically. I did not. Poor Elijah Saunders. Nicest kid ever, Tony. He's just a sophomore. What is he, 20 years old, maybe? <laughs> yeah. Scrappy yeah. asked him this, this down-to-earth this question, and Elijah took about a three-minute pause. Here's what I asked him. And then went. Wow, I've never been asked that before. <laughs> that what did you ask thing? him? I, forgot. I said, when it's all said and done, your ass is over. 
what is the one word you want people to describe you as? And he was like, um, and yeah. then I realized I put him on the spot, but he had a good answer. He said winner. Yeah. And I thought that was a good answer. <laughs> he did come up with, he saved well, you. That, that, well, that's something. Yeah, he did. Cause that's something you, that's something you typically wait until you know, like a junior or C, junior getting ready to be drafted or a senior, you know, where he's had some time to kind of look. He probably is like, man, I, I, I don't plan on barely, being barely being playing. gone anytime soon. Yeah, I hadn't <laughs> thought of that yet. <laughs> when you look back on your life, Elijah, what are you going to remember the most? That, oh, that, that question on that show <laughs> from years ago. Scraby has 20. been. He's yeah. been in great form all day long. All right, Tony. Oh, wait, wait. Has Tony ever heard of a psychic vampire before? Tony, I think you. I think he's a little bit behind right now. No, I have not. Um, well, Chris is a psychic vampire because basically it's just a person that sucks the life out of you. So uh, Chris ha, ha, is a ha, psychic ha, ha. vampire. Tony, if you don't get, if you don't get back soon, we're gonna be there, we're gonna be starting to throw punches in the uh, studio. So you're gonna have yes. to come back. Yes, thank you, Tony, for checking in. Thanks for checking in. Enjoy the call tonight. Best of luck. Hopefully, we'll talk to you after the game sometime tomorrow's show. All right, fellas. Thanks, Tony. There he is. Yeah, he is on a little delay, but I mean, he is halfway around the world. So, what do you expect? Tony Gwynn Jr. there in Seoul, South Korea. We got a big five coming up here. We got Wagner leading uh, Howard. Uh, I believe it's, what was it, 38 27 halftime in the uh, first NCAA play in game. More Gwynn and Chris coming up. Why are you going to interrupt me? Nope, again? nope, 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 nope. You try. Nope.
All right. Uh, welcome back. Thanks to uh, Tony calling us, getting in here from uh, South Korea. Uh, I said we'll try to catch up with them after the game tomorrow, but well, maybe tomorrow because they play two games, right? So maybe we can get them tomorrow morning possibly. before the second game. Yes. I said possibly. I no, didn't no, no, say I know, we can. I know, I know. I'm just thinking. It's not easy to, you know, it's not easy to hook up with them. It's early in the morning there. I think they're also moving out of their rooms. Halfway across the world. So we'll see what happens. But uh, hopefully we can get more insight from Tony Gwynn Jr. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, jealous. Wait. Because he knows the lineup. Oh, and I, I thought don't. you meant about him being in Korea. No, I'm not jealous about that. Well, I, I think we know uh, that Graham Pauly is. Maybe Graham Pauly's the guy at third base. He didn't say that. He didn't. He, he just didn't. said that Graham Pauly was grinning because he knows he's made the team. By the way, what an elevator to get on. Tony Gwynn Jr., Mike Schilt, Graham Pauly, others. Yeah. That would be a nice elevator to get on. Yeah. What would you say? Uh Excuse hey me. Hey guys, what's the meaning of life? <laughs> okay, are we going to go back to this? What do you guys think over? of the UAB Dragons? <laughs> <laughs> People think that you're making fun of me, and I just want to tell them that if he said that, I would be doing the same. Oh, God. So you would be all over me. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we got the Big Five coming up shortly. Uh, as I said, halftime of the very first NCAA tournament game. It is the play in game between Wagner and Howard. Wagner 38, Howard 27. Halftime later tonight, Colorado State against Virginia. Against? Yeah, I like that to throw funny. the uh, <laughs> I like to throw the Canadian version of that word in sometimes. <laughs> that was funny. Um, all right. Uh, what else? Anything? In- no. You got Jimmy Garoppolo in the Big Five? I do not. Uh, I don't really care about Jimmy G anymore. Don't care about him anymore. No. Well, he spoke today about his two game ban. For the NFL's performance enhancing substances. What did he say, Chris? He said he messed up. Oh, okay. He messed up. There you go. <laughs> Finally, somebody just admits that they messed up. I thought he was going to say, you know, I didn't know what was in my, exactly. my pills. Yeah. Garoppolo is the new backup to Matthew Stafford with the Rams now, but not for the first two games, he won't be. <laughs> what are they going to do? The, the Rams. Rams? Oh, my God. I don't know what Sean McVay I mean, will have has to come up good... with something. Wow. Isn't it crazy how far Jimmy G has fallen? He was the starting quarterback of the 49ers two years ago. Now he can't even really find a team. It doesn't take long. Doesn't take long. Also, I've been reading a lot about how he's treated uh, teams and stuff. And I guess during the offseason, he's a very, very difficult guy to get a hold of if you need something from him. If you need to like, hey, we're shipping you a new playbook. Jimmy G? Yeah, he's, he's, he's off the grid. He's off the grid. He's very difficult to get a hold of. And that's what Boy. the Raiders didn't like about him. And that's what the 49ers didn't like about mm. him, which I guess you don't necessarily need to be waiting for your yeah. work to call you, but you should probably call them back. If you're having a tough day, if you're having a tough day, could be tougher. This story you told me earlier, I just got to throw it out. Tennis player, Arena Sabalenka, number two in the world. And they found out today the death of her a boyfriend, a former pro hockey player from uh, Belarus. Belarus. Uh, his death is now being ruled an apparent suicide. That's 42 nice. years old. Yeah, that's a bummer. That's so sad. Ugh. Stan that. That is uh, a huge bummer. And I mean, just, I mean, he he dies she that's gonna live on with that memory yeah so difficult it is it's so it's, all the best to uh sabalenka yeah. and uh the family of that uh, young man colt sov it's a very boyfriend's name i i encountered some suicide um that hit close to my life recently it wasn't anybody that i really knew but still it's a very selfish thing because you leave everybody else hurting yeah. And you leave everybody else questioning themselves. Yeah. You also what wonder what kind of pain somebody has to be in. Yeah. And, you know, as we've said this so many times on this show, if you're struggling with anything, get help. Yeah. It's For available sure. out there. 100%. All right. Uh, let's uh, check traffic and then get to today's Big Five. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Dabbick. Traffic is sponsored by Soapy Joe's. Several problems in the North County. Got a stalled vehicle on the South 5 coastline just past the racetrack. Looks like that is blocking the HOV lane. On northbound side, just before the 78, there is a collision involving a couple vehicles. Got the right lane blocked. And northbound 15 transition to westbound 78. Collision involving several vehicles. That is blocking the left lane of that connector ramp. 
Chief Bubble Officer Tony Gwynn Jr. offers some exciting news. Soapy Joe's newest location is now open on Cuyamaca Street in Santee. Come and join the Wash Club to get unlimited washes. Come drive in today at the all-new Soapy Joe's on Cuyamaca in Santee. Soapy Joe's is good, clean fun. I'm Kelly Danik with Gwynn and Chris, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. It's that time of the show when we check on the latest in sports. Only the most important topics and questions are brought to light. Stop what you're doing and listen. These news stories will astound and amaze you. The one, the only. Oh my God, who the hell cares? The Big Five starts now on 97.3 The Fan. Well, everybody just... uh. Get ready, because this is going to be a carryover with our segment with Tony earlier. It's okay. I'm not mad at the carryover today. It was for a good reason. Tune in to 97.3 The Fan tomorrow and Thursday as Soapy Joe's presents the games from Seoul, South Korea. Listen to Jesse Agler and Soapy Joe's Chief Bubble Officer Tony Gwynn Jr. Call the action. (laughs) Soapy Joe's is also the official sponsor of our Padres in Seoul, South Korea watch party tomorrow morning. At 3 a.m. at 7 Mile Casino, it's all brought to you by Soapy Joe's Car Wash. Good, clean, fun. One of the things I need to do is when I need directions, just ask the people. because I, I Everybody and their mother's telling you how to get to 7 Mile Casino now? And it's now. great. Now I will not need to put it into my GPS, and I'm not kidding. So thank you to everybody. 5 Freeway, get off at East Street. It's right there on the uh, frontage road to the freeway. Chris really is priding himself on these directions. <laughs> That's how to get there. We'll see you at 3 a.m. Junior asks, what are the responsibilities of a chief bubble officer? No idea. Just make bubbles? Just to have your picture splattered all over the walls. (laughs) That's no at Soapy Joe's car wash. Number five. Tony's everywhere. Yes, he is everywhere. Yeah. All right. Here we go into the big five. The Padres have made it a little easier for you all to watch the Padres this season, even if you don't want to sign up for another streaming service. 10 News is reporting that a satellite cable option or a satellite or cable option to watch the Padres will be available by March 28th. They did not announce anything today, but they are going to announce it soon. And if you would like to pay the team directly, you can pay $99.99 for the season to subscribe to Padres.tv. So, Chris, you're up first on this one. Um, it's $99.99, a fair price for a full season of baseball. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That scared me. Sorry. It scared me. I'm so – I hate this. You know me. I just hate it. But how much do you pay? Honestly, I'm asking honestly, how much do you pay for your sports package? Yeah, my cable sports yeah. package so that I get Padre. I don't know. That's a good That's a, That's a. a good question. I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah, I don't know. Either. I don't know what we pay. Um, I just want to watch games on television. I want it to be on my cable service. I want to hit a channel on my TV and have the game come up. I don't want to have to stream it. I don't want to have to keep paying extra for it. But I know this is where it's going. Yeah. And I can't stop it. I'm powerless. It's like a um, it's like a dam is burst now. And every team and every sport thinks they can make tons more money. Uh, well, by making us pay money to stream their games. I will say that this was not a, the Padres' idea. It was kind of forced on them because I'm not Valley blaming Sports the Padres. The heck out of here. I know. I'm not blaming the Padres. This is where it's all headed. Padres are just playing the game that everyone else is playing. So, based on all of that knowledge, 99 bucks for 160 games doesn't seem too bad. 62. You know what I mean? Oh, I guess 160. And by the way, I read on that 10 News article that the blackout is going to be lifted for ESPN and the games being televised. Well, the Padres it's and Padres. high time they finally do that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, is 99.99 a fair price for a full season of baseball, Mr. Scraby? It's 50 cents a game. It is. If you look at it that way. And you know what? I don't mind this because it may one day... You may have you may be able to get rid of your sports package. You may be able to get rid of your cable. I know Chris doesn't want to, and that's fine. It's personal preference. But it may actually end up saving you money in the the, the long run of things. I don't know. I haven't broken down the financial stuff, yeah. but I don't care what it costs. I don't want to cut the cord. And every time you're not I gonna see have it, to. Huh? You're not gonna have to. No, eventually I will. Eventually. Yes. Everything will be streamed. There'll yes. be nothing on cable. Yes. But until then, I'm paying money. To be do it the old fashioned way. Give me round ears. (laughs) Not really a fan of those. (laughs) 
All right. Well, we know where you're at. We know where I'm at. And yeah. if you have any questions about TV, go to. 10 well, let me news. ask you this: like go next, Thur- next Thursday's game, opening day. Yes. Is it on television? Anywhere? Or do I have to go to Padres.tv and no, pay no, money for be, it? No, no, no. I don't know. No, I don't even know what's going to, on. You're going to be able to watch just like you did last year if you already subscribed to it. If I subscribe to what? Well, I'm a, see, I don't subscribe to Padre Baseball. No. I subscribe to Spectrum Cable. Exactly. And so on Sunday night when they were playing uh, – I can't On remember. the ESPN game? No, no. They were – it was a locally televised game when they were playing the exhibition on Sunday night and Dylan C's pitched, and it was on the Padres channel. It was? Yes. Oh, I did not know that. So, All right. anyway, don't ask me, please. I don't know. Yeah. Ask 10 news. You probably get that question more than any other from it's, people. They all want to know what the TV package stuff is with the Padres. We are not involved. We just are like you. We report what we see. And I, 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 I don't want to say that I'm mad at the questions, but... I'm a radio guy. I have nothing to do with TV. <laughs> and I, I try so hard to like be nice back. But then when they say, well, well you're on the radio, you should know. It's like, what? <laughs> no. Anyway. Yeah. This we is just know. Matt Scravy problems no, over it's, here. It, it, it's, an, it's a, um, it's a um, you know, being a celebrity type person problem. Oh. So, that comes with the supposed knowledge of everything. Please don't and it's put just me not in the true. celebrity bracket because I am not. I mean, did you hear what I asked the guy earlier? Number four. Evan is his name. I was asking. I was thinking about that. Uh, with the hit of the Netflix show Quarterback last year. Wait they're... a minute. This is only number four? Yes. Oh, boy. With the hit of ne- the Netflix show Quarterback last year, they are, er, blah, they are doing it again, but this time with wide receivers. So they're going to call it. Man, they're really breaking, cracking the old noodle here, Chris. They're going to call it Receiver is the title of the show. How about Diva? Diva is a good one. Be a better name for it. Well, it's going to follow the lives and routines of a number of high-profile pass catchers from around the NFL. Uh, there's two 49ers on the list, George Kittle and Debo Samuel. Then you have uh, Vikings' Justin Jefferson. You have Raiders Devonte Adams, and you got Detroit Lions Amon Ra St. Brown. They're all going to be featured in the show. It's I'm only first. it's only by happenstance that I yawned while you were saying that. Okay. I just want people on the stream to realize I did not yawn because I'm bored of the I, notion okay. of of this uh, reality TV. Yeah, but it is kind of ironic because I am starting to get a little bored of this notion of reality TV. But you loved this show last time. I did. I liked it. I thought it was fresh. I thought it was new. I thought it was, you know, entertaining. It was something I did not really get or, you know, before. But now that I've gotten it, I don't need it again. I don't need it over and over and over again. I thought, I, you I know, thought, I still yeah, okay. like Hard Knocks because it's a little different team. This year, of course, it happened to be the Dolphins. So I had more interest than normal. I guess I, this is a little bit of old man in the lawn stuff. Are we ever going to... Is it too late to put any toothpaste back in the tube? Yes. Because we're getting to the point now, Scraby, where we have to film and make a television show out of everything. I do think we've gone overboard. I do. Right? I do. Because there's, so, there's, you, I mean, can, you can watch the Colts full season. You can watch the Cardinals full season. You can, can watch, watch the Dolphins full season. And, and then you can so go to like much. 49ers.com and watch their own version of those shows. Yeah. And now you can do wide receivers and quarterbacks and the one thing baseball's is, doing one this year on the Red Sox. And, true. I didn't, you yeah. know, I, the SEC network was doing one on women's college basketball. I mean, it's, I, it's fun, but it's, I, I just wonder where it's all going to stop. And I guess the answer is it's not when people stop watching, but yeah. uh, I just want to point out George Kittle's a tight end, not a wide receiver. So well, Re- but the show's called receivers. Yes, I know. So he, he receiver, a receiver. But they do, I will say, they got some big names for this show. Justin Jefferson's huge. John Monroe St. Brown is huge. Devontae Adams, Devo Sandy, yeah. George Gill, huge. All right, so we got more Big Five when we get back, and we're going to talk about Justin Fields and a teammate's reaction to him being traded. Anthony Edwards, his dunk. Also, John Rahm has selected his dinner for the Masters, one of my favorite topics of the year. So we'll also go over that when <laughs> oh, we get back. Oh, my goodness. If you're ever thinking of changing the channel, now is not the time. Not the time on 97 Feet of Fan.
Oh my goodness, you caught us in the middle of our Big Five. Welcome back to Gwen and Chris. Happy Hour kicks off here on 97.3 The Fan. Chris Ello, Matt Scraby. Together in our Odyssey Palace studios, Tony Gwynn Jr. joined us earlier from South Korea. He and Jesse Agler will have the call of tonight's season opening game between the Padres and the Dodgers. Game will get underway at 3.05 a.m. Are you going to stop by and say hi to Sammy Lev on the way down like you told him last week? Yeah. <laughs> Sammy's doing the pregame show at 2 a.m. Yeah. Since I live close, you do. I could sneak into the building here and surprise Sammy Lev with a visit while he's doing the pregame show on my way down to Seven Mile Casino. Yes, I think you should. I think you should just stand outside the window for a second and scare see the See how long it is before he realizes I'm here? Yeah. Well, we'll see how it all plays out. Hopefully, we'll see many of you down at the uh, opening game viewing party, Seven Mile Casino, 305, this coming morning. I think I finally got my plan, and I will reveal on the Scraby Show. Scraby Chronicles, follow this show at 6 o'clock. Yep. Right now, 15 and a half minutes left. Wagner trying to win the first NCAA tournament game of the year, leading Howard 48 to 34. Winner of this game faces North Carolina in the first round on Thursday. North Carolina does scare me because I've picked them before and they end up losing early or something. But didn't they win a couple of years ago? They got to the finals two years ago, we, lost we to Kansas. Them? Kansas, okay. Yes. All right, All right uh, let's finish up the big five. What do you have in store for us here with maybe two or three stories to go? Some fantastic stuff, and there's actually two more to go, I believe. Okay. <laughs> or three more to go. Three more to go. Here we go. Number three. So we talked about Justin Fields being traded to the Steelers yesterday. Now we are hearing the reaction from some teammates, and let's just say everyone was not as excited as Bears management was for this trade. Tight end and friend of Justin Fields, Cole Komet, said, quote, I was planning to, or he, this was about uh, St. Patrick's Day. Quote, I was planning to hit the city and go out, but then I got a call from Flus, um, their head coach, and the people with the Bears, and decided to stay in after the news with Justin. Obviously really upsetting that it came to that and where it was at that moment, but you kind of felt like the writing was on the wall with that end quote. Chris, how much does a team need to keep their players aware of what's happening? I think the good teams do it. The not as good of teams don't care about it. I don't think you have to do anything. But I think it's pretty cool if you keep people and make them feel like they're in the loop. Yeah. Just makes you a better organization. That's all. So if you're asking me how much do you have to keep people in the loop, I'd say you don't have to keep them in the loop at all. But I think it's very beneficial. Yeah, I agree. If you don't need to, like the punter probably doesn't need to know about Justin Fields being traded. But He doesn't, but it's nice just even if he knows. It's nice when you feel part of the group. I've always felt that, you know, teamwork is a is a, an important thing. Yeah, yeah, it makes the dream work, right. <laughs> but I think, it ma- I think it matters. I think it does too. So when they make a move around here, you know, I, I like to know. It I is. Mean, I, I gotta say, it is a little you know, jolting when you see something on social media and you're like, "Whoa!" Uh, I what's work next? there and I don't even know it. Yeah. What's next? Yeah. And, and so. so yeah, it is good on the Bears for doing that. Still think the Bears are pretty dumb for for trading Justin Fields for yeah, a six. Yeah, I just pick. wouldn't have traded Justin Fields. I would have traded uh, the number one pick and I would have taken Marvin Harrison. But that's me. Yes, that is you and I. But um, how much does the team need to keep their players aware of what's happening? Just you know, Adam does a really good job of this because. It, Adam it is, Klug. Yes, Adam Klug, our boss. It is nice to know things before they go public because all of a sudden these things go public and then you're inundated with questions and you're like, I'm still trying to figure out what the heck happened myself. So the Bears, I'm surprised that the Bears were good in this way, Chris. I didn't expect it. Yeah, they're not a great organization as their record proves. Yes. Floose. Number two. Not ever floose. All right, so John Rahm is uh, the reigning Masters champion, and he, every year, the winner gets to pick the dinner for before the event, and here is his dinner. Uh, it's 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 all stuff from his home in Spain. So, paella? Please don't get on me for these pronunciations. Paella? Uh, we'll see. What? I, I He has to have paella. Paella? <laughs> from Spain, you have to have it. The the tapas and pinzos, I think those are appetizers, right? 
Tapas? Yeah. I Ibericos, ugh, man, I'm really going to make myself look stupid here. Ibericos, which is acorn-fed Iberian ham, cured pork loin. Edas of all con trufa negra. Oh, boy. Edas of all cheese, black truffle. Tortilla de patatas, a Spanish omelet, onions, confit, potatoes. Croqueta de pollo, creamy chicken fritters. Lentejas estafadas. Ooh. Mama Rom's classic lentil stew. Tristora con patata. Spicy basque chorizo potato. First course. I have first no course? Idea. That's the appetizers. Those are all appetizers? Yes, first course. Who, is... Wait a minute. Who? I mean, how much money does the Masters have? A lot. They just put millions of dollars into this meal every year? Yes, a lot. All right. Um, the first course is ensalada de Shanguro. I really pronounced that wrong, with, which is crab salad and a potato. Okay. Main just course, give us the Americanized main, version of there it. There is no Americanized version, and that's so American of you to say. Yes, it main is. Main course. But I'm trying to save you from having to pronounce all these names. I wrong. have to. This is what we get. The main course, you get a choice of chuletan a la parrilla, which is Basque ribeye, Tudela lettuce, piquillo peppers, and rotabio al piu peel. <laughs> Remind me next year to not be so interested in knowing wow. what the menu is. I, I I thought when you said I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the menu, you're gonna say they're gonna have they're gonna have some steak. macaroni and cheese, some steak, and a salad. I didn't know this was gonna be a four hour, yeah. you know, dissertation. I here. didn't know this either, and I'm making a fool of myself. Navarro white asparagus is that one, and then the dessert is mil milojas de crema y nata, yeah. puff pastry cake, much. custard, and chantilly cream. Yeah. Anyway, that is a lot, but. That also, sounds pretty delicious, stuff. I gotta say. I guess it does. I don't know what the hell it is. I don't either. You so, did, you were in Spain recently. Yeah, I didn't have any of that stuff. All I had was paella. <laughs> Junior says, Scraby started strong. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> you I, faded badly. You faded, you uh, faded badly. All right, here we go to the final one. Number one. All John Rom really wanted to talk about was how he's in live golf and they ought to be part of the world rankings. Yeah, yeah, that's all he's really interested in. He's not interested in the rest of this stuff. He wants to be ranked. He does, and it doesn't actually really matter. And they don't him. rank the live golfers. No. Uh, Anthony Edwards of the Timberwolves did this last night when his Timberwolves visited the Utah Jazz. Attempt in that first half. Another turnover for Utah. Edwards gets it back. I got to say, this was one of the better dunks I've seen in a very long time. If you uh, haven't seen it, go look for Anthony Edwards dunk. That's the search term. He dunked so hard, Chris. I think he dislocated his finger in he the process. He also gave the uh, the guy he dunked on a uh, head contusion. Really? Yeah. I mean, John, um, whatever his name was. Oh, I see it. Yeah. Collins. Because, because was it like a knee to the face? It did not look easy actually wow. anyway anthony edwards is doing crazy things it reminds me of this i've never seen anyone ever do that <laughs> which was pretty incredible by donovan mitchell when he was with the jazz anyway long story short um chris where do you rank posterization dunks on the list of athletic feats uh very low oh low. sorry very low very low i'm really? not i'm not i'm not blown away by them that much anymore it goes along the category of everything's a reality show. Nowadays, everybody can dunk on somebody. It's not, it doesn't shock me the way it used to. It doesn't get me out of my seat the way it used to. Everybody thinks it's the greatest thing they've ever seen. I've now seen it a thousand times. Ant Man's was pretty good last night. That was, was really good. That was about as good as something needs to be to get my attention now because I see dunks. These guys can do it in their sleep. How about making a 15-foot open jumper? <laughs> you know, that's what I'd like to see. How about somebody making a bounce pass and a backdoor cut? That's what I like to see. I know. I'm old. Get off my lawn. I, I get it. But that's my point. It's, you know, it's reality, uh, reality TV now. Everybody does it. Dunking, everybody does it. The one thing, the most overrated thing in sports, well, that's uh -oh. a heavy category. The most overrated thing in basketball, though, is swatting a shot, blocking it right out of bounds. Why? You know, because the other team gets the ball back. Okay, you didn't do anything. No, you didn't right. change the course of yes, anything. You, you did. You changed the course of that shot. That's it. 
The other team gets the ball back. Now, if you block it and keep it in play and your team gets a fast break the other way, now you've made a tremendous play. You've you've swayed me a little bit. I, I think posterizations like that, like Anthony Edwards from last night. I think they used to intimidate the opposition. Yeah. I don't think they do anymore because everyone does it. I mean, Anthony, not Anthony, uh, Austin Reeves of the yeah, Lakers yeah. I was just about basically got jumped over last yes. night and dunked on. And after the game, he was laughing. Well, you you, you mean, have to laugh. But my point is, is was he was, he was posterized? But was he intimidated? I doubt it. That's Everybody dunks. It's not a big deal anymore. Sorry, I'm old. Posterizations are are, are still cool to see in yeah, clip format. I don't okay. need to watch a game for a posterization, but if a posterization happens, I will watch the posterization. All right. So how how highly do you rank it then? I, I didn't get your... It's in the top 10. Top 10. No, nah, top 15. Right. You, you swayed me a little bit there. I don't know. It's like hitting a 400-yard drive. It's pretty impressive. You go, whoa. But you know what? If you don't have any accuracy on your chip shot, it didn't do you a whole lot of good. Look at a you with dunk your golf analogy. It's still worth two points. You don't get any extra. A dunk shot? A dunk shot. I remember when Chris said that years and years and years ago when we first started, and Tony and I both looked at each other like, did you he thought that was hilarious. Did you just say dunk shot? Slam dunk. You know, made up that term? Chick. Chicky. Chick yeah. Chick fil A. Practically all of the terms in basketball that we just take for granted were invented by Chick Hearn. Slam dunk. Ooh. No Cheers. such thing before Chick Hearn came around. Junior has a good point. Um, it's like a bat flip now, just a normal celebration, like a posterization. A little bit. Yeah. I mean, a, dunk, a, a posterization dunk takes a lot more talent than a bat flip. It's well, a still have to hit pretty the home impressive run. thing to do. You still have to hit the home run. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm glad we got through that, Chris. We did? Yes. We done? That's it. That's it for the big five. That's it for the big five. Let's check traffic. Come back. Elijah Saunders. Of the Aztecs basketball team enjoyed he enjoyed uh, he enjoyed it he had joined us earlier, whether or not he enjoyed it may be a different story, but I think he did. We certainly liked visiting with him. We'll have that interview coming up in this happy hour. Stick around, more Gwen and Chris on the way after traffic.
All right, I got a, a quick question for you, Scrape. As we come back to the program, 520 is the time. Wagner 62, Howard 49. About eight minutes to go in the first NCAA tournament game if you're keeping track of such things. And don't tell me you're not keeping track of such things because we're all going to be keeping track of such things this week. That's what we do. <laughs> That's what you do. Oh, get out of here, Scrape. You don't think everybody does? Why does everybody fill out a bracket then? Um, you make it sound like I'm the only one who does this. Everybody gets excited. Everybody walks around the office wherever they are and goes, I'm nine and four. I oh, think- man, I'm seven and six. I'm 11 and two. My bracket's busted. My bracket's busted. They throw it out. And then your wife walks in 13 and 0. You know. <laughs> so don't tell me that. Everybody does a bracket. That's what we do in this country. Chris's wife picked the, uh, San Diego State to go to the championship last year. She did not. I thought she did. No. She won the bra- she won the bracket at work a couple of years ago. Oh, I thought last she did. year she came in second. Oh, that's my bad. She did not pick the Aztecs okay. to go quite that far. I don't my think bad. anyone did. My frankly. bad. Um, do you know what Tariq Scooball is? Oh, why do I know that name? How about Cole Reagans? I know Tariq How about that one? Scooball better. You do? Yes. Who is it? Is he a baseball player? Not only that, he's an opening day starter. For the Detroit Tigers. Oh, that's what I've heard it. Cole Reagan's opening day started for the Kansas City Royals. Alex Wood, 33 year old lefty, opening day starter for the Oakland Athletics. Oh. I don't know if this means anything to you, but baseball is trying to make this a big deal now. Have you noticed the this? Opening day starter? They announced all the teams announced their opening day starters today. And baseball rolled this out as some way of getting us all excited. For opening day next Thursday, we now know who everyone's going to start. I think this is a good idea. I must tell you, I don't think it's working. Why? Because I didn't know. Well, first of all, the Padres didn't have to name one yet. No. Well, no, they did last week. For today. For for this game. Oh, yeah. But yes. they didn't have to name oh. one for next week's game. I know. It's so confusing that the they have Giants, two games. Yeah, they, they have two opening off. days. The Giants have already named Logan Webb will start the opening game here next Thursday. That was part of the announcements that were made today. The Padres don't have to name theirs yet. All right. Anyway, I, I think I don't think it's a big thing. I don't I don't want to. I'm glad baseball's trying. There to be it is. A big deal. At least they're trying. It, that's exactly what it is. Like with the spring breakout thing, even though it failed miserably for the Padres and Mariners because the well, game that was wasn't rained their out, fault. It rained out. Yeah. They still are trying to promote the game, to grow the game. So they're following through on what they have been saying they're yeah. trying to do. And I think this is good because if I saw an article that said opening day starters, I would have clicked on it and I would have learned. There you go. The best opening day matchup probably is Philadelphia and Atlanta. Zach Wheeler for the Phillies, Spencer Strider for the Braves. That's in Philadelphia. Corbin Burns will start for the fourth place Orioles. The fourth place Orioles. Yeah. Somebody picked them fourth the other day. Like, what? Fourth. Yeah, that was pretty. Uh, I don't like that pick. Pretty crazy. All right. Uh, Aztecs uh, will get in gear on Friday. We uh, have our interview with Elijah Saunders coming up shortly, but Brian Dutcher faced the media. Was it today? Yes. Our, own our Adam, Adam Klug. Klug was out there <laughs> at the Montezuma Mesa to get the latest from Coach Dutch. First thing from last year's national championship game mentor. What did last year mean in terms of hopefully applying some of it this year? You know, two years ago when we got beat by Creighton at the end, everyone was thinking we could never win a game. Now that we've gone to the national championship, no one thinks we're going to lose a game. So every year is different. Every team is different. So we'll roll out there and hopefully play really good basketball. You mentioned that you thought some of the Mountain West teams were going to be seeded. Um, many members said that, you know, maybe most of their squad was going to be against each other. Sorry. Um, does that give you more freedom to so maybe um, push a cloud on your other 20 games schedule? Well, we're going to play 20 games. We continue to schedule anybody we can. And our wins over Gonzaga and St. Mary's are probably a large reason why we got the seed we got. And not afraid to take road trips to BYU, Grand Canyon. But in the same breath, I mean, Colorado beat Creighton in in, in, in Colorado's University of Colorado this year. Those are two really good wins. Quad one wins, I think. So 
Uh, I don't know what their thoughts were. The Mountain West, uh, like I said, Nevada beat TCU on a neutral court. So it wasn't like anybody was ducking anybody. So uh, I'd be interested to hear what the committee thinks about all that again. Doesn't really matter what the committee thinks of all that. I mean, although I agree with, you know, Coach Dutcher for sure. It doesn't really matter what the committee thinks about that. What really matters is that the Mountain West Conference teams win some games this week. That's what matters. Do you realize that in the last couple of years, the Mountain West Conference record in the NCAA tournament, if you take out abysmal, the Aztecs, abysmal. if you take out what the Aztecs did last year, 0-11. It's abysmal. Nobody's won a game. Somebody's got to win some games this year in order for the Mountain West to reap the benefits of this year and the six teams that got in. And, you know, I love, I just love Coach Dutcher's attitude because he's so right. When they lost to Creighton, there were people that honestly thought it was time to change coaches. I remember that. He's this. never going to win a tournament game. He lost to Houston. He lost to Syracuse. He lost to Creighton. He didn't get a chance to go the year, the 30 and two team. Yeah. Like, when are we going to get a guy in here who can win an NCAA tournament game? Well, Apparently, we already had one. Yes. Because he won five of them last year. I think the loss to Syracuse paired with the loss to Creighton. Syracuse was a major downer, a bummer, yeah. because we were all very excited, and the game was over before it started. Wow, that, that uh, ba Buddy, Buddy, Buddy Bayheim made has every he made single a, shot. Has he made a shot since? I, I don't think. I don't know where he is, but he's, you know, anyway. Yeah, yeah he was I'm going to so go hot. look up where Buddy Bayheim. Find is. him, will you? He's probably with Jim Fredette somewhere. <laughs> in, in China, maybe? I don't know. He is actually, he plays for the Pistons. He does? I guess so. Really? Oh. Yeah, he's a Detroit Pistons forward. He averages 1.6 points per game. Wow. <laughs> he's having wow. a huge impact. <clears throat> maybe, they ought to, maybe the Pistons ought to think about putting him in. Uh, maybe. I mean, maybe they just, haven't won. They've won like five games all year. Maybe that's the reason. He, they're not putting him in to just yeah. drain every three. Yeah, put him in. Maybe that would change things for the Pistons. It's funny with, with Coach Dutcher, though, because we did go through that phase of some people went through that phase of get him out of here. Let's get a new guy. Yeah, we had Fisher. We were great. Now we got this guy. He's not as good. He's a wannabe. And then it's we're amazing like, how we how we're able to change that uh, narrative. Yeah, based because on it what went happened. to. It yeah. went to, oh, we got to keep him. We can't let anybody steal him. No, he's the greatest <laughs> coach of all time. Yes. And the funny thing is, he's the same coach now as he was before he won those tournament games last year. Same exact guy. Same guy. And that's what I appreciate about Coach Dutcher. He hasn't changed. Not at all. And he recognizes that's just the way it is in the world of a big-time college basketball coach. Um, I'm going to go check baseballlineups.com. Are you really? Yeah, To you. see if the Padre – have been you know tony was on with us from south korea earlier and we the first thing i asked him was uh whether or not he knew the lineup for tonight and he said yeah i know it but i can't share it with anybody he enjoyed that too he really did he was like i was yes. so upset <laughs> i really was. want to know the lineup so badly uh it's not out yet yeah i'm sure it's not out for anybody else tony's the only one who knows the padre lineup so frustrating. He did give us a little hint. He didn't say if Grand Polly was going to start or not, but he said Grand Polly was in the elevator and he was very smiley, smiling ear to ear. Yes, with Mike Schill, ear to ear. That's right. Yeah, he was happy, but I think, but Tony made it seem like he was just happy because he was informed that he made the team. Yeah, that is kind of uh, unfortunate that he called his parents and no one answered <laughs> from Korea. It's the middle of the night. It is the middle of the night, but. You'd want to tell your parents. Yeah, hey, I I'm, made the team. I'm not. Cetera. I'm not yeah. like blaming his mom for anything. So please don't get that twisted, everybody. But I think my mom would be waiting up for my phone call. Yeah, but how do we know that that was the official time where they were going to decide? No, I get it. I'm not saying that their his parents did anything wrong, but I think my mom's waiting next to the phone for my phone call. So, mom, get a life. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> All right, we got a break. Elijah Saunders, our interview with the Aztec Forward when we come back on Gwen and Chris. There's a lot to take in for just.
好。Hello, hello. Final segment. Gwen and Chris. I heard that somewhere. I just said that very thing before Scraby actually turned the microphones on. Scraby, so. the Scrabinators of the Scraby Show know that I often start the segment screaming to myself and realize that I have not turned on the microphone yet. The Scrabinators, That's the listeners to the Scraby yes. Chronicles. The yes. show comes up at six o'clock tonight. What do you have in store for us today? What's your daily gripe? Are you going to share or do you know yet? <laughs> uh, Yeah, no, mm, don't have to. No, I'm not going to share because okay. it, it has to do with um something that happens to me often on this show. Yeah. Actually, you know what? Maybe I No, I'm not. I'm sorry, everybody. Wow. I go back and forth. You are back and forth. All right. But we're going to talk about everything. Daily gripe coming up from Mr. Scraby to wrap things up in the Scraby Chronicles. I hear the show's pretty good. Do you hear it is? Yeah. I've listened to it a little bit here and there, and I liked it. I got to say, I, uh, but, I, I, I I get nervous when people that I know, like you or mm -hmm. even our boss, when I know that people are listening, like our sales guy, Peter, came by one day. He was leaving. I was uh, in a commercial break. He said, hey. See you later. I'll be listening to you on the way home. And I'm yeah. like, oh, gosh, that's you didn't want to know that. No. Is that weird? Because there's a bunch of other people listening, but I don't want that one person to listen. I don't know. I'm Most a, everything about you is weird. I'm so. a strange person. I know. Yeah, I find it interesting and weird. Uh, they're <laughs> under four minutes to play. Howard is trying to come back against Mr. Wagner. Wagner still leads by seven, 67, 60. They were up by 17 earlier in the second half. Colorado State still to come against Virginia later tonight. Uh, Elijah Saunders from the Aztecs joined us earlier. We'll have that interview shortly. Before we get to that, Scraby wants to know what I think the Padres' record is going to be this year. Mm -hmm. That is a tough one, right? I yeah, mean, to really just is. predict it right on the head? No, it's, it's tough. You know, I mean, are you going to remember this? Um, Sure. Number one. Number two, when are we doing our preseason – pick segment with tony i mean we got to get him back from korea this is these are the things that go through my head on the drive home and it stresses me out yeah we're gonna have to do it next week we're gonna have to do it next week we're gonna have to we got to have our picks we got to have our players of the division we got to have our biggest busts yeah we got to have our mvps yeah. we got to have our breakout star breakout star first place last place and then it's just embarrassing how bad we are every year Yes. I mean, it's incredible. We always revisit at the end of the year, and we're like, how did we think that? I, I know, but some of the thoughts are good, and some of them are like not me so good. last year saying Nestor Cortez is going to be the Cy Young of the AL East. No. Didn't even come close. No. Oftentimes, they don't come close. No. No, I overthought it last but year. But as far as the pottery record, I'll give you one. Now, I'm on record as saying they're going to be better than last year. Yes. So last year was 82 and 80. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got to go above 82. You're going to 83? I'm going to 85. 85, okay. There you go. 85 and 77. I think that gets you into the playoffs in the National League. But it's, you know, again, it's hard to predict. It is. Because they could have six teams with a better record than that, or you could not have six teams with a better record than that. It just depends on how the season goes. So I'll say 85 and 77. I'd like you to put that down somewhere. Okay, let me get my notebook. Oh, brother, you're actually going to write it down somewhere? Yeah. You if I wrote to. it down, I wouldn't know where to look for it. That's surprising because I usually, you're kind of our record keeper a little bit because That's you're true. so good with that stuff. Yeah, I am good. I mean, look at my notebook, everybody. It's just a bunch of scribbles and, and Your things of that nature. Your a veritable disaster. Um, all right, you said 85 and 77. Um, what do you have? AJ Casvel, by the way, said 83 and 79. AJ Casvel has a one game improvement. See, yeah. I don't want to go crazy, but I feel uh, but I feel like 88 games is not a crazy change for this team. I well, know that they lost it. players. I'm gonna be optimistic and I'm gonna say 87 and okay. 87 and 75. Okay. You're going all the way to 87. Yes. I will say this on the surface. It's almost impossible to believe that the Padres could be better this year. They're losing one of the best hitters in the game, one of the best pitchers in the game, and one of the best closers in the game. And there's no argument. Soto, Snell, Hater. 
three of the superstar players in all of baseball. Yeah. They've lost them all. And to look at that and say, yeah, I think they're going to be better is kind of silly. But I'm banking my prediction on the fact that they just – I'm not going to say it anymore because somebody said yesterday, Chris, don't say water finds its level ever again. <laughs> and I agree with that person who said that because we kept waiting last year and it never happened. But I do think that it, you know, it's going to even out. They're going to win some one-run games. They're going to get some hits with runners in scoring position. So that's what I'm banking on. Uh, Wolfpack says 105 wins. Yeah. Well, Wolfpack, you're optimistic. Yeah, you're optimistic. All right. All right. Silliest thing I've heard all day, Wolfpack, other than the fact my wife originally picked Creighton to win this year's – or no, Clemson. Yes, that is funny. She Chris picked Clemson to, pick the, uh, to win the pool. I said, honey – you have to redo your picks. I didn't even know Clemson was in the tournament. Clemson's not winning the tournament. Sorry. <laughs> They're not going to be national champs. That was really funny. Chris comes in, he throws down the sheet, and he was yeah. like, I had to tell her. I had to tell her. You had to tell her. You got to redo their, redo your picks. All right. Uh, let's take a break. Or not a break. Let's yes. check traffic. And then our interview with uh, Aztec forward Elijah Saunders. I hope you enjoyed as much as we enjoyed it the first time around. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Danik. Kind of a rough afternoon on our roads, guys. East on 54, got a collision now right before the 805. Those vehicles are over to the right shoulder. Also traveling on eastbound King Freeway, right before Spring Street, there's a crash. Not showing if lanes are blocked. Looks like an accident has cleared on westbound King Freeway at the 805 connector. Traveling on southbound 15 past Arrow Drive, accident being cleared from the two left lanes. Eastbound side of the 8 before Waring Road crash has cleared. Watch out for quite a bit of residual slowing there. Hit and run crash, Genesee off ramp, south 163. I'm Kelly Danik with Gwyn and Chris, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. Good to have you on the show. I'm doing good. Uh, thank you guys for, for having me. Absolutely. All right. I know that you guys are focused on the job at hand. You got to, you know, Friday and everything, and we're going to ask you about that. But I, I, I can't help but go back to the picture of you and Miles Bird racing off the bench to – celebrate with Lamont Butler. I know it's been brought up to you. Is there anything you guys can take from last year's run to the championship game that might be able to help this year's team? Yeah, I would just, uh, I would say the main thing was the perseverance of last year's team. Uh, a lot of games, I felt like we were down, down at halftime even. Um, just, just understanding that the game is never over. You know, that's, that's the one thing I took from last year's team. Anytime we were down or struggling or couldn't score, you know, the guys were always positive and always believed that, you know, if we get stops, we're eventually going to score and come back and, and we can win every game. Talking to Elijah Saunders here of the Aztecs basketball team. They are going to be playing on Friday against UAB. And just to kind of stay with last year's team, I, I, I guess what I am curious about is because you were a freshman last year, you go to the national championship in your first year. That's awesome. That's very cool. What can you take from that experience, do you think, for the rest of your career? Because that came at the beginning of your college career, and I'm sure you probably learned something. Yeah. Yeah, that was definitely not what I expected my first year to be like, to go to the national <laughs> championship. Um, but, you know, it was, it was a great experience. And, you know, it really just shows me – it really just showed me this year especially how hard it is to, to do it. You know, last year we won the conference – uh, in league play, we won the conference championship. You know, we went to the final four. So that's really all I expect. I expect to win the league. I expect to win the league title. And we didn't do it this year. Um, you know, it just shows you how much work goes into to winning and being successful and, um, you know, how much just, just how important, you know, the work is. Elijah, take us, uh, if you can, you know, into the locker room a little bit. And uh, who's been speaking up this week? Is it Tramel, Ladee, Lamont Butler? If you guys just relied on Coach Dutcher, what's kind of being said around the guys as you head into this, you know, an, into another run here in March? Yeah, all those guys. <laughs> um, you know, a couple, of weeks, a couple of weeks ago, Micah, uh, talk to some of the guys um, after practice one day, just, you know, this is, this is important to us, you know, last year's team, you know, we're a new team, uh, you know, we're, we're a different group, still some of the same guys, but, you know, everyone has something to prove. And, you know, knowing that this is, 
you know, Darion's for sure last run, uh, Jaden's last run, uh, Jay Powell, you know, they're out of eligibility after this year. So, you know, the next game we lose would be their last. So, um, you know, just trying to give it all we got for them and, um, you know, come together right now is, you know, before we make a run in this tournament. Talking to Elijah Saunders here of the Aztecs basketball team. And Elijah, you guys, um, uh, not by design, but you, you do get behind and then you make furious comebacks. Is there any, is there any, like, what does Coach Dutcher tell you when you guys are down by, say, 12, 14 points? What does he tell you to get back into, get you back into the game? Just keep defending. Um, keep defending. Uh, keep, keep being patient on offense. You know, I feel like in games where we've gone down and not been able to uh, come back and win were games where we kind of were less connected as a team. So, uh, you know, we don't want to be down, but when it happens, just come together as a team and, you know, get stops and play together on offense and we'll be good. You know, Elijah, I mean, you're giving us heart attacks in all of these games by falling behind by so much. So stop doing that, will you? Please tell everybody that Uncle Chris said to stop falling behind. Elijah Saunders is with us. And, uh, you know, you were one of the guys that, you know, from last year's team that was able to, you know, make it into the starting lineup this year. And, I mean, you know, what a thrill to join the starting lineup with Lamont Butler and with uh, Tremel and Micah and, and Jaden Ledee and, and everybody – coming off a national championship run. And, um, you know, I thought you did great. And then you had a little bit of a slump and Brian uh, Dutch decided to bring you off the bench. And that seems to really kind of work for you. Talk a little bit about your journey, personal journey this season. Yeah. Yeah. Even, even as you go into last season, you know, being a coming from high school, um, you know, always starting all those years and then, you know, not even touching the court um, for for the end of the season last year. And, you know, it felt like no one had seen me play, like, especially my family. Like, um, you know, I feel like it had been so long since my family had seen me play. So, you know, I wanted to start this year. That was my goal, you know, even though, you know, not many people <laughs> might have thought I would have started in that Fullerton game. You know, that, that was my goal. Um but, you know, starting, it, it, I thought it was going to, you know, be the greatest thing ever, um, you know, make me the happiest person ever. But, you know, that's not what it's all about. It's just about coming in and um, competing and being in the right head space when you check into the game. You know, I feel like in my worst part of the season this year was a time where I was really just focused on the wrong things in the game, um, you know, overcomplicating it. So, um just refocusing on my headspace this season um, throughout times and, you know, trying to do whatever it takes for us to win because that, that's, all, that's, 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 that's all that's important at the end of the day. It is. That's uh, very wise stuff from you, Elijah. We're talking to Elijah Saunders here of the Aztecs basketball team. And my last question for you is when your college basketball career is all over, said and done, how would you like to be remembered by Aztecs fans? And that's, um, that's a deep question, Elijah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I gave you the spot that. a little bit. I apologize for that. <laughs> um, I would say a winner. There you, you go. Know, I'd say I'm, good. I would say I'm off to a good start. Yes, you um, are. But, you know, someone who, you know, just always has a smile on their face. Um, you know, I just love to play this game. I'm blessed, you know, with this opportunity to be at such an amazing school and, um, you know, such amazing coaches and teammates that, you know, just a winner, someone who values winning more than anything and um, someone who just enjoys to, to play the game. I don't know what I'm going to do with Scraby over here asking all these deep thought questions, but you answered it very well. <laughs> Elijah did, Saunders is with us. I Hey, I remember that guy, Elijah Saunders. He was on all of those final four teams. There you go. He was on <laughs> all perfect. The, that, that's exactly what they need to say. There you go. He was on all of those final four teams. Uh, Elijah, tell, we talked to some people from Birmingham today. Just get a little scouting report. I'm sure you've seen a lot of film. Sounds like they play a lot of switching defense, some 1-3-1. One, one. Uh, offensively, you guys, uh, you know, it's been a little inconsistent. Where are you guys focusing your efforts heading into this game and practice this week? 
Yeah, uh, in practice today, we saw a bunch of defenses. Um, you know, we had a lot of live segments where we just attacked them differently. Um, they switched defenses throughout the entire game. You know, you might see a one three one, two three, man to man. They might extend it to the full court, two two one. Um, so it's a lot, um, <laughs> but you know, it's a style that we haven't really seen this year. Um, but you know, we'll be prepared. We've already um, come up with ways how we're going to attack each defense, and you know, whatever whatever's thrown at us, we'll be we'll be prepared for. Well, I tell you one thing. None of us, even the most ardent of Aztec for lifers, and I consider myself to be one of those people having gone to San Diego State, none of us were prepared for what you guys took us through last year. It was a <laughs> wild ride. It was about the most fun I've ever had as a fan, and I'm hoping why not do it again? We really appreciate you coming on the show today. Uh, I talked to Richard. Uh, the media relations guy, and he said, you know, Elijah is a very well-spoken, well-thought-out young man, and Richard was right. Yes, we appreciate was. having you on the show, Elijah. Good luck this weekend. We will be watching, and uh, we'll look forward to uh, hopefully catching up with you down the road here. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me on. Absolutely. Very good. Elijah Saunders right there did a good job in the face of uh, difficult questioning from uh, one Matt Scraby there. I will give him credit. <laughs> He came up with, <laughs> he a, came good up with a good answer. Yes, he did. An almost an impossible question yeah, from yeah. you. Uh, all right. Uh, the first final in the NCAA tournament is in the books. It's all over for the Howard Bison. They have been eliminated. The Wagner Seahawks, 71, Howard, 68. Pretty good finish. Howard came from way behind. Yes, they did. Got back in the game, had three chances to make a three-pointer and tie the game at the end. Missed them all. Missed them all. Missed them all. So Wagner will go on to face North Carolina. The next game in the uh, first round, Colorado State going up against Virginia. That'll get underway in about a half an hour. But the tournament is officially underway, and for that I'm quite thankful and excited. How how long does that shot stay with you if you're the guy who misses it? Uh, hopefully not too long. Yeah. I it wasn't the same guy who missed all three. Yeah, if that was the case, that would have been tough. That would be tough. But you can't know, ask what? for a better better finish for your team is get three opportunities. You know, I saw I saw a statistic the other day on Twitter that I thought was interesting. Do you know who missed the most shots in the history of NBA basketball? Um, who missed the most shots? Kobe. Yeah, Kobe. Yeah, nobody's ever missed more shots than one of the greatest players in the history of the sport. That tells you something, right? Yeah, it does. Right? Yeah. I'm surprised. Got to be I willing that, to take yeah. a shot to make some. You're going to miss a few. He missed now, a I guess, lot. He missed a lot. Now I guess LeBron is closing in on that record because he's been around for so long. Yes. But uh, right now that record still belongs to Kobe Bean Bryant. Not exactly the worst player. Just no. missed the most shots. Yeah, it's a, it's impressive to take the most shots too. Well. There you have it. LeBron's going to break all those records. LeBron's breaking them all. My goodness. He's not saving any for anyone else. He is not. What a hog. What a ball hog. A ball hog. Uh, one last thing before we go. We have a minute on this. ESPN agreeing with college football in the playoff on a television exclusive broadcast rights deal Yeah, that will last through the 2031 season hopefully the earth is still around then <laughs> why why did that's you a stop? fair comment actually okay. the way things are going <laughs> it is a six-year agreement that will cost 1.3 billion annually oh annually i was like wait i saw a much bigger number oh yeah annually no okay. it's gonna be like still. a lot of money a, a lot, lot of money hurting you wonder why you know everybody's got so much money out there because tv pays for it that's why scraby's next he's got the chronicles when we talk tomorrow the Padres will either be one and oh and headed for the world series title yes or they'll be oh and one and headed for disaster We'll find out which. Hopefully we'll see you at the viewing party tonight. So long.